Welcome, everyone, to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. I am your host, the self-made superstar, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. the $1,000 Broski, a.k.a. the Michael Jordan of Wrestling Figure Collecting, a.k.a. Chelsea Green's husband. <laughs> also here, producer of the show. <laughs> Sweat works nearly. Like, hey, boss. Hey, these are all inside jokes that nobody. Hey, knows. boss. What's up, everybody? <laughs> TNA star and tag team champion, the most professional Brian Myers in the house. What's going on? The most professional Brian Myers. <laughs> the most professional wrestler. I think, you, I think you skipped wrestler, pal. I'm so thrown well, off by that. It's like you're like or, Nunzio or, or when he called himself Nunzio. <laughs> Your face to face. With none of you. Well, well, as you saw, guys, I'm also here. Producer of the show, Smart Mark Sterling Esquire, the most famous professional wrestling lawyer. And this show is brought to you by our good friends, Ringside Collectibles. Use code MAJOR to save 10%. We're having a hard time with this show, but we, we got through it, boys. It's Chelsea. It was Pick up week. the Chelsea Green from Ringside Collectible. And I don't know which I one is the chase. Get my hands but... all over Chelsea later in the show. Oh, you I'm son of a bitch! <laughs> take 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 her out of the box. Not the first time you got me with one of my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve that. Anyway, uh, <sighs> Ringside Collectibles going to be the proud sponsor of Live 19. If you're listening early on MajorMarks.com, it's this Thursday. If you're listening Friday, you missed it, pal. And uh, we love Ringside. So many cool figures coming. Uh, so many figures in stock. So check out Ringside Collectibles and scratch that figure itch. Guys, follow us on X, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Major WF Pod. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts and leave a review, but not just any review. Leave a motherfucking major review. If we read your review on air, you will get a little prize. This one is from Benaz Boss Miff. This is a little weird to me because it says to the Jurassic Park theme, but there's no lyrics in Jurassic oh, Park. Oh, yeah, but that's fine. Like, just play it in the background as you read? I don't get it either. Yeah, right? Like, how how does it go? Yeah, read it like that. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's the Hall of Fame coming later. All right, <laughs> let's see. Major podcast is the best show in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah you got it. <laughs> D-Free is informative, but annoying. <laughs> 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 Matt and Brian give the best reviews in town. And Mark will do a what not show someday. I don't know. It was tough. It was tough. Uh, Adding great. lyrics to a song doesn't have lyrics. It's kind of, it's kind of tough. Again. And look, D Freedom, we see him in the waiting room. He's gone. He left the show. Yeah, he's, he left yeah. the show. Yeah, he took his ball and went home after that one. That's but guys, pee, leave your review every single week. It helps a lot. And uh, the giveaway every single week, courtesy of Ringside Collectibles, find our pin post on X. Reposted to be eligible last week. It was Darby Allen and Brody, uh, the the blood and guts. The winner of that was at A Z Victoria one. You win, and this week the prize. Oh, Sean Heartbreak Kid, defining moments. Oh wow, yeah, it's an underrated, underrated figure. A very <laughs> underrated figure. Yeah. Guys, majormarks.com, patreon.com slash major pod, the fan club, the subscription service, the family, the community. Every single month, guys, we uh, have so much stuff going on. Two bonus episodes in the month of April. We are recording one on April 15th. It's going to be a great episode. It will drop on April 15th, kind of the anniversary, if you will, of the four years since Brian and I were released from WWE. A little Q&A. And uh, the other the other uh, episode we haven't quite figured out yet, but we have a whole month, so yeah. we have a whole. We month might do something at WrestleCon. That's yeah, what Mark we and Brian are scheming. About. All right. Scheming. Also, guys, every single week we give away a prize to a new and old subscriber. Who do we got, Mark? First time in the line, Avery Richardson and the classic superstar Michael A. Chilcott. Chilcote. Ooh, that's almost giving Grocock a run for his money, but it's Chil- Chilcote. Oh, Cote. Very it cool. could be. C H I L T O T E. 
Chill. Over on majormarks.com, so many different tiers, so many different perks. Get this podcast early and ad free. Uh, if you're in the hard foundation up, you get a card. The Dan Housing cards from February are shipping. Uh, the March no, Dan card. Dan Housing is out. Okay, yeah, people have that. The yep. March card will be shipping soon. The April card we're going to get is going to be awesome. And also, April is a ultimate member prize month. But, Mark, what are the new rules? You have to be a member for a whole quarter? Yeah. Yes. So from, you had to be a member January, February, let, March, April? Can't let people February, cheat March, system April? anymore because that's what they were doing. So you had to be a was... member February, March, April? January, February, no, March, just Feb- April. January, no. February, March, April, four, right? Oh, or, or quarters. Four. So Quarter. three. Yeah, February, right. March, April. February, March, April. Yeah. Right. So do that. But if you want to just sign up today, you get access to this live every single Monday. Whenever we record, ultimate members only get to be in the uh, the chat what's, with us. And I, I mean, it's too late right now if you're listening to it on Friday. But it's a big month for April because you cut that line at the live show that's already sold. Oh, out too. B- 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 baby. All the other bonus shows, Figure Dissecting with D Freedom, Let Him Breathe Myself, Silver Lines with Mark. Oh, baby, he's happy hour. The Captain's Live with Joe Shoes. Who does Shoes have for uh, April? Do we know yet? Um, I do not know, actually. I pro- procured at Moose Room last month, so we'll have to uh, do some digging. We did a Q&A on Heath's. Uh, for for last month for March, uh, went I up. Heard uh, no tears. I heard yeah. no tears. No but tears. Uh, he, teeth is uh, teeth. Heath has gone off the deep end. I feel so. You got to listen to this episode. <laughs> Pretty damn cool, man. Well, guys, right. there's, a, there's a Facebook group. So much cool stuff over on majormarks.com. Am I hey, uh, Mo, Mo the Fig God here? He says a new. He's a new ultimate major mark. Well, I welcome, love it. Pal. Welcome, welcome pal. Mo. I love it. Uh, some follow up guys. We went to the Squared Circle Expo this week. Hell of a good time. Ed oh. runs a great convention over there in Indianapolis. Brian was there with me. SDL, Knick, Horsewoggle, and I squashed the beef. And of course, this will be a vlog coming soon to the YouTube channel. Awesome weekend. As I mean, I look forward to every year. It's just such a fucking amazing convention in a brothered out way right yep i can't explain it one of the best conventions out there 100 yeah. percent. So. so fun check out the vlog you'll uh you'll really enjoy what we got the um, vlog is can. already up if everything went to plan um if you're <laughs> listening to this so i'm looking forward to it but uh for, uh, for me you know normal random collision town on you know london ontario and canada but uh broski you'd know a little bit about that too wouldn't you I, uh, I made my collision debut this Saturday. I had to uh, switch some things around. Originally, I was supposed to wrestle Ultimo Dragon on Saturday. Instead, I defended my Squared Circle Expo title against Ziggler, a.k.a. Nemeth, on Friday. Lost the Strizz app. Squared Circle Expo screw job. I said, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm taking a flight to Detroit to get a rental car to drive to London, Ontario. And that's <laughs> that exactly what I did. <laughs> So how the okay, how the hell did this come about? Well, I heard there was a cope open. Okay, <laughs> Adam Copeland, a mentor of mine. I'm a former Edgehead. I heard he had an open challenge, a cope open, defending that TNT championship. I said, you know what? I'm always ready. And I, you know, I was leaving the Square Circle Expo anyway because of the screw job. I said, I think if I get on a flight from Indianapolis to Detroit, rent a car. Even though National says I can't drop it off in Canada, I'll just lie to National and say I'm dropping off in Detroit still. Yep. Across the border, drive to London, Ontario, sneak into the building, and then put a black uh, tarp over my body and walk to Gorilla. I think that's what I'm going to do, and that's exactly what I did. Wow. <laughs> I believe they call it the go position. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The go position. <laughs> but uh, seriously, yeah, I had, got to have my, my dream match, my literal dream match against... Uh, Adam Copeland, Edge versus Edgehead, rated R superstar versus self made superstar. And holy shit, it was a wild uh, 24 hours. But, you know, one of my career highlights, and it's, it's crazy. It just happened like that, and it's already up there on that list. Can you, can you say, like, when you started planning for this? Um, Wednesday night. 
Wednesday night. So it's the, crazy the to me. The day before, I drank and ate my face off at Epcot. <laughs> Tuesday. And then Wednesday. Oh yeah, the night before. So Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I was like, you know what? I think I'm getting some good uh, wrestling shape by Saturday night. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. And, I said, and if you, I if I get randomly booked against uh, Nemeth on Friday for some reason, lose, I'll be so pissed. I'm just gonna I'm gonna find that flight to Detroit. <laughs> get a roller car. Are we worst dancing around this? Kayfabe, ex, the worst kayfabe explanation of this yeah. whole. After thing. we just did well, a whole bonus podcast, it's better than you, Brian. Thing. Tell him when I had diarrhea. <laughs> oh, bro, what was I supposed to do? I, I thirty-seven. Know. Wait a minute, what? That's what happened. So so. To me, <laughs> this this is ridiculous. I'm leaving thing was so not believable and stupid, even though that's what Broski really wanted to go with. I'm like, people kept me like, where is he? Is he coming down? I said, yeah, he's just got diarrhea. I said, I think he'll be down a little bit. Just hang tight. I just told, and I told about, you know, 40 people that throughout the day. Because what am I supposed to do? Hang tight. I didn't let many people know about my plan to to fly to Detroit to get the car to drive to London, Ontario. Brian knew. Did you tell Kinnick? Kinnick did not know. I did not tell him unless Brian did. Uh, I told my wife. I told, I told uh, Nick Nemeth. So what did you tell Kinnick when you just weren't going to see him the next day? I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> so he just thought he would see you at your table and you woke up, went to the thing? and I guess. Himself. I don't know. You got to ask him, pal. <laughs> I just think. He didn't know. The he excuse that Matt Cardona would willingly leave a convention and not make money is so not believable that you should have just. I, I, I listen. I still. Else. I, 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 I'm sticking to my guns. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> tell people. Okay, so okay, well, uh, back up, back up. What well, it's hey, night on the podcast? Well, we really should be saying telephone, telegram, telewrestling. That's how I it works. I completely agree. I agree with Matt in this. This is not something that should have been common knowledge, right? Yeah. But what in this segment and in this show, what you should say is that Ed, the promoter of Square Circle Expo, is one cool motherfucker yeah. to appease to all these changes and things to let you go Ed, have a Ed fucking is, dream match and be cool about it. Ed is super cool. Uh, I'm also super cool for at least coming the first day. Uh, but seriously, Ed is uh, Ed's a pro's pro, totally understood the situation. Uh, and guys, don't worry. I'm not banned from Square Circle Expo. I will be back next year. I love Ed. He's awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, when I had the opportunity to have my dream match, which we talked about it last week on the pod. How crazy is that? Bro, that, that's what I was going to say. Monday, Brian says, and we put this on social media and stuff. Brian says, you're failed AEW run. And I said, it's not really failed. You're 2-0. And then you make the joke. <laughs> no, you both are like, no, we had, there were shirts. Three <laughs> well, shirts, <yeah>. two matches. <laughs> two and oh, three shirts. Top selling shirt. Top selling shirt. And then Broski says, wins matter, rankings. I could pop in for a title shot. And we all went, ha, 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 And then there you go. And then he walked in for a title <laughs> shot. Pretty incredible, um, actually. So you'll love this, Mark. So when I had this idea that I was going to, you know, accept the Cope Oakland. Cope, uh, blah, 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 take a shot. Take a shot of PBR. Cope, it should be open. the Copen challenge. I had gear made. Yes. Instantly, right? And had to overnight it to Squared Circle Expo. Yeah. Of course it didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> of course yeah. it didn't come. So luckily I'm always ready with my Deathmatch King stuff. But um, <sighs> I feel like that that had to give you a lot of anxiety. Of course, of course it did. Of course it did. Because you know me, especially with gear. And luckily I packed stuff. Like, just in case the gear didn't show up, you know, like something I would be comfortable wearing on television, uh -huh. you know? But, um, of course, I wish the gear had come. But in retrospect, it's fine that it didn't because, you know, this was my uh, major bendy exclusive. So, at least, like, it's a figure form. <laughs> you know, I have this match will be live on in, in figure form, you know? Where did the gear go? It got delivered today to the hotel? Yeah. And then yeah. what? Uh, Rick is having it sent back to uh, just sent back to him. Oh, okay. you can do so that. that is that's crazy. I did yeah. hear that story. Yeah. Now uh, I'm there, right? Um, I didn't tell Mark. Did not tell me. I, <laughs> I am there. Which I which I knew all along, but that that was like probably the most fun aspect of it. For me. <laughs> really? <laughs> so yeah. once I sent the message in the chat. You were like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that was like the, my favorite. Once Mark figured it out, yeah. 
<laughs> well, Mark, tell them how you found out. Yeah, so I I was, uh, and I just talked about this earlier. I I was filming the pre-show to Collision, so I was in like the interview set or whatever. Um, for a for a bit, like I want to say, like maybe an hour, we we're waiting for people to show up, blah blah blah, and then I walked out around five thirty, and. You know, in that hour, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, things, you know, probably pieces of matches got booked, you know, there's boards probably up, people know what they're doing. So now I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And Daddy Magic comes up and he says, uh, oh, um, so your boys uh, doing the open challenge. And I immediately thought, I got all like nervous because I thought it was Josh. <laughs> I thought Josh was walking out <laughs> doing the open challenge and it was like an, an hour and a half before TV and I had no idea. But then he he I I was like Josh. He's like no, Matt Cardona. I was like no, he's not. He's at the Squared Circle Expo. <laughs> they were talking about it all week. Like, oh man. And then he was like, no, for real. Like, but he didn't he didn't tell you. <laughs> he, he didn't tell you. And the Mark instantly gets offended and mad. So oh. then I'm upset. Oh my god. <laughs> And then I want a couple minutes later, I walk up to Johnny and Taya, and I'm like, I can't believe he didn't fucking tell me. And they're like, Wh- who? What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, Matt. And, the, and, and they're like, Matt, what? Sometimes you got to keep a fucking secret, bro. I, know. I, I said, <laughs> Matt's here for the open challenge. And they were like, what? <laughs> Where is he? I said, he's in, he's in Edge's room. And they're like, let's go in there. And I was like, okay, but I'm not knocking. <laughs> so so uh, Morrison knocks on the door and he opens it, opens it and Adam is there. And he's like, hey, what's up? You uh, just in here alone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Adam goes like that with his head. <sighs> and then uh, we walk in and there's Broski. And then we joke later that we embarrassed him because we all came in and like gave him hugs. No, it was it was it was a very stressful day. Very stressful, um, just you know, not much time to prepare for having your fucking dream match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 And I'm like, and and, it's like, and you had to like do so much bullshit for the two days leading up. It's right. not like you could prepare. But like sometimes, I don't know. I think like when you don't think about it so much, that's like when you're at your best. I agree, one hundred percent. Like yeah. I got to the the building. 5 30 show starts at eight and we're first so it's like oh boy <laughs> not we, much time i was you didn't know you were first huh no i didn't know anything right. i didn't know anything um and luckily the match uh you know went how it went um and the the response from the the crowd like the 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 i hate to say the word pop but the pop and then holy shit on the entrance it was like man at one point i'm almost i had to catch myself from smiling because I'm like, oh, you're the bad guy, you know? <laughs> but all I kept thinking was a couple things. One, like in WWE, when we had pitched to be back with them, the people who said no one would remember, it was kind of like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Big, big fuck you, for sure, yeah. And also, it was like, everything I've done these past four years, people fucking know what I'm doing. Right. So it was like two satisfying moments uh, at, at once, and then it was like, I get back... Into, or I get into the ring, I'm like, oh, fuck, this, this ring is fucking big. <laughs> you know, because I'm used to like a 16 or an 18. Yeah. <laughs> but, 16s, uh, yeah. I, I never even locked up with, with Adam before. Ever. I was going to ask you guys that. Had, what, you guys kind of split when he was hurt, and then there was never, you never went, you didn't have a feud. There no. was one, I don't remember if Rosie remembers this. I can't remember what happened. Maybe he like fucked us over on TV, like the end La Familia. But we were all still in the live events, and then we, there was something where he's working like the main event. And we have to come out and like we just kind of like beat him up back to the ring, and he goes like it was like just a one weekend. I don't even remember that. And we were all like, "This is so awkward. I don't like this." And we had to like just just brother punch him. We meet him in the aisleway and like fight him back to whoever. Not on that's TV, like, just live events. Just a live, but that's like the only time I didn't even remember that like because we were always on the same team, you know. You know, I I put this in my Instagram post like when we did the run in. At WrestleMania, which, by the way, I found this out after the fact. The match I had with Adam was exactly 16 years after that WrestleMania run-in. That is crazy. How fucking wow. wild is that? So I have goosebumps right now just fucking weird. saying that. Like, how so is it weird. Possible? It's nuts. But by the way, they said major wrestling figure podcast on the show. I know, I know. 
Ian Riccoboni, thank you so He's much. He's the best. Tony Schiavone, Let's... slap dick. Um, so I, I flew home from Squared Circle, Squared Circle Expo because the Easter Bunny is very real at my house and I couldn't you know, do the be there, do the show, or fly in the morning. But that, like, it was twofold. It was like, oh, I want to get home, say goodnight to my kids, but also, like, I'm like, shit, I got to watch this broski batch. Yeah. And my phone, was, it was literally going on as I was, like, in the Uber back to my house. My phone was, like, blowing up, and I couldn't wait. And one of the things, like, I got to say, when I did watch it, I was like, oh, thank God Rick Avani's on this call, because he's, I just know he knows us. Yeah. And, and stuff, and he's I thought a that man. was really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, just ear to ear happy you know i was proud you know excited uh jealous even you know shit i was going through all the emotions watching that but nobody was as proud as mark and i got this picture this candle <laughs> picture of mark watching from behind the curtain broski do his thing you know i yeah. wanted to get um the footage of the of the pop right because yeah. i wanted to get it from the crap because here's the thing guys right the other thing that i immediately knew is this vlog is going to be awesome because you guys <laughs> and it was already awesome with fun you know stuff that we do anyway right right so you guys are doing this squared circle expo vlog which is going to be great but then just randomly broski leaves and goes to do a dream match at, at aw which is nuts and then and then i'm like oh i'm going to be in the vlog too so yeah I wanted to shoot the crowd, and I stepped out of the first curtains on the side, but I was still behind other curtains. So I'm standing there like, oh, this is a perfect spot. No <laughs> one will see me <laughs> at all. But there's this fucking camera. There's a there's a picture of just I, I look I like stand out like a sore thumb <laughs> in my bright ass suit. Holding up the camera, filming Broski. It is it is hilarious. The wizard behind the curtain says Tim Mer- yeah. Merritt. But yeah, I wanted to get the, the Popski. And, and to, to backtrack for a second, like I thought I was so like, like I guess ignorant at the time when we were the Edgeheads. I thought, oh, well, next year WrestleMania, it'll be me versus Hawkins versus Ryder, three-way, 100%. Ugh. You know, and the next year WrestleMania, Brian and I are fucking jabronis in a lumber, lumber we're lumberjacks, jacks, baby. So I couldn't be further uh, from the, the 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 dream triple threat I had in mind, but then you know Adam retires due to neck injury. I'm like, well, fuck, never gonna have my dream match. He comes back, I get fired from WWE. I'm like, well, I'm never gonna have it. And well, comes back, and we were told nobody. We pitched a ton of things to yeah. be involved in them, or right. even be like, not even things like to be the edgeheads again, but like where whoever he was going into that mania with beats the fuck out of us and right, it's like some right. kind of sympathy I think, like, for him I th- as a baby. I think like, we were trying like, to get not like, even like we're not even like oh put us with Edge and we'll be tag champs again right, like, it wasn't right. even like what you would think people were pitching we were just pitching like anything right. to be involved in I think unselfish we are, things we are seen like in an ambulance shot Remember, because he like we had a, we like left raw early because we weren't doing anything no no no, no no you're mixing all, that up you did an ambulance us. shot that was post show but. No, the no, raw no, before go, the it, pandemic. It goes off the air. The bet they drop, but he Randy drops Beth. That doesn't go off. The, we're in the we're on raw, and I'm with you guys. Me and VSK no, are in the you're, ring. You're, you're thinking of something else. I'm thinking of somewhere out with Gallows and Anderson, like a literally about to take a bite into my burger, and like you need to go back There's to raw. Two things. Like, <laughs> that same that's, thing happened. We were in the car leaving to go record the podcast that one in is, Brooklyn. Okay, one is Barclays. We yeah. were all about to leave to go record the podcast. We did leave and we got we called back. We but that's where away. Randy sticks Beth and we, I don't know why Adam's not even there. Okay. And we all come out and you are like Mark's a fake medic, right? Everybody, I'm the doctor. VSK's right, the yeah. doctor. And then there's another time there. there's like a post show stretcher job that we got called back for. I don't even think it was on TV where we're like, you're going to be okay, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that actually. I think that was first, mm. and then but, our um, thing was second. But yeah, to, so to finally get the match, uh, especially since I've been just taught, like, if you go and listen to the podcast from last week and see my my tweets from this week, it's like I had no, like, I post, like, a picture of, like, the Edgeheads, like, all this stuff, like, teasing this match, but I, it wasn't booked. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to happen. It was just kind of, like, meant to be, I guess, even though I don't believe in that shit. You know, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't watched the match back because I loved it so much. And I know if I watch it back, I'll like dissect myself and fucking hate it. But I, I in the moment, I absolutely loved it. And like 
the people hated me, which I loved even more. Yeah, yeah. that was great. They, I think we told a good little story. It's an awesome yeah. crowd. That crowd was awesome. Yeah. My one critique was: Were you trying to do the edge like corner fire up? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> I thought it was good too. Well, I was doing the little bounce to get like the that's what I do before the radio silence, and I just drop down to the spear. He was doing the broski version, not the edge. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Just yeah. to clarify that. Because yeah. Edge just Edge had did it right before. Yeah. yeah. It's a little different, but I try well, listen, I sorry I don't do the spear like you do. I, I didn't fucking steal his moves, you know. But it's a tri- it's a tribute. I was a tri- well now I'll tell you what, I'm gonna steal that that uh that execution, new move for my move set. I thought you did <laughs> it anyway. I've never done it before. I'm gonna oh, start doing it now. Do you do it in TNA? The DDT? Yeah. It's like a deep falsy move for me or something. Not really right. like a every right. match move. Um, it's a, I'm I'm adding it to my repertoire. That was an exact Brian Meyer spot, by the way, the dick kick pull in execution. Never saw you do it once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Subconsciously, that, I bro, that 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 dick kick is Broski one on one cutoff the spot, exact spot. Um, I've done, yeah. Uh, I'm so, you know what I did on my way to fucking London. I was watching Brian Myers matches. <laughs> on, on YouTube. I'm not saying that. I'm saying maybe subconsciously you kept it there. I don't. How know, far was that so Detroit it, drive? It was. It was two like hours? two and a half hours. Yeah. That's not bad. Have the show. Great match. Like I'm on a natural high. I go to the London Hotel. This is a real broski move. I think this is actually a great move on my part. I know, but I would have just tapped out and I don't know. I go to the AEW book me in a London hotel. I get there and I ask the guy. I literally check in. I check into the hotel, get my room key. Ask the guy, how far is this away from the airport? He says a half hour. I'm like, a half hour? (laughs) I have to be at the airport. My flight's at six. So that means I have to be there at five. It's a half hour away. I got to jump off a car. I'm like, and at this point, it's like almost midnight already. Yeah. And then I look at my flights. I'm like, wait a minute. My flight is London to Toronto to Orlando. Why don't I just fucking drive to fucking Toronto now? Yeah. Book a fucking hotel and then just catch that layover. How far was that drive? It was like an hour and a half and not too bad. But I guess my thing is, how did you know that you could just catch the... No, I, I, ha- I had to call Air Canada and ask. I had to yeah, pay, you like, have to like you can't I had to, just. I had to, I had to pay if you miss the first bucks. one, they'll cancel the second. Yeah, one. yeah, I had to pay fifty bucks to like re-credit it or whatever it's called. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then so I then used Marriott get, points. I asked Mark what hotel he was staying. I wanted to hang out with Mark. I fucking used my points to get there. I get there. He goes, Ah, uh, I'm tired. I'm not hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> it was twelve thirty. I was laying in <laughs> bed. I, fucking, I, I literally <laughs> drove to hang out with Mark. So, eh, nah, you know, I take oh, a shower. I'm sorry, eh. man. How come I'm they sorry. didn't put you with everyone else? I'm now more confused. Because I had asked. I didn't know where everyone was flying out, so I asked. Because they said, Do you want to fly drive back to Detroit and fly? I said, Fuck no, just fly me out of London. Right, you know, so I because I just didn't know, yeah. I didn't know everyone else was staying in Toronto. Yeah, we were all in Toronto and got bust. Yeah, Toronto. Must have been, I don't think we've ever flown out of London in our career. Even WWE, we drove to Toronto to like do it. But and I, in Impact, we did Detroit and drove. But man, hell, hell of a house, hell of a reaction, hell of a, a moment for me, and and no, man, and all so the cool. all the people who reached out, the major marks. I I really really appreciate it. Thank you. It was a career highlight for sure. Check one off that that bucket list, and hopefully now with this forbidden door, we can see maybe Brian Myers take that that Cope open. You know, I don't know why I can't say <laughs> you Cope have said open. that differently can't, every can't, time. Can't <laughs> guys, take a shot of your PBR pals. I can't. Yeah. Even, it's a it's a tongue twister. <sighs> Cope open. Hell yeah! But well, yeah. great job. Thank you so much. Um, other follow ups here. X Pac, make some noise. X Pac, he tweeted out, which I thought was super cool. This is very nice. That he was so excited. And his favorite thing about his upcoming SummerSlam figure is that as a referee, John Cone, build a fig. I'm a big John Cone fan. I fucking love that. I I kind of wish I was uh, you know, with a with the John Cone. Right. Same. I wish it was just a John Cone figure that I could have him sign and hang up instead of you I, know, I build think John event, Cone, I think that was the plan at first. But I'm glad we got it. Hey, better better this way than not getting it at all. Uh, 100%, yes. And in this year, imagine this. like he, Him and his son, Nicholas, get figures. Fucking cool, man. Everything's coming up Cone. I love it. 
I'm a cone head right here, baby. I'm a fucking who else is a cone head? The cone heads, baby. If you're a cone head, put cone head in the comments. I miss seeing John Cone in the ring because man, he like you watch old stuff. Like I watched a little bit of that Bray Wyatt documentary. He's just like always seems to be the guy in the ring. It's pretty cool. Uh, also, we have okay RVD. <laughs> he finally got his unreleased figure. I love that he has all his figures on display. It's really cool. Yeah, like. So you didn't watch the video, right? I did not watch the video. No, all right. Seven minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can maybe I'll just skip to get this out of the way. He calls me Matt Cordona, right? He, he can't say your name properly, but he yeah. he was struggling to remember your name, but then he, yeah. he pulled that one out. He never yeah. said Zack Ryder, which kind of shocked me. Okay. Then he's like the other dude, dude, and he's trying so hard, but he puts me over a bunch of times. He's like he's cool ass dude, like so I don't mind, and then. He said, what I thought was it, because this weekend, he signed this bad boy for me right here. Okay. Um, so you and just saw him. I just saw him. So by, he must have filmed this, I think, right before he left, is would be my guess or something. But he called me, he was struggling, yeah. and then he finally pulls out Curtis Axel. <laughs> he goes, what was your WWE? I'm like, Curtis, Kurt, Curtis. I said, Kurt Hawkins. He's like, Curtis Axel. And then you got to watch this video, because he goes through like... I mean, he's trying so hard. It's awesome, but he doesn't, never comes fully yet. He says Curtis Axel, and he's not sure. But uh, Rob's the man. And like you said, do appreciate that he has all his figures. Another little tidbit, and you'll see this in the Square Circle Expo vlog. A fan came up to me with that figure, Men on Cart. Really? And he showed it to me, uh, me and Cabana. We filmed it. It's in the vlog. And I said, he said, should I go get it signed? I, I said, yeah, dude, absolutely. He's right. He's literally right there. Like, wh- why wouldn't you? I said, but beware. He might want to cut a deal with you to get it because I know he collects all his stuff. Yeah. And then, like, apparently, the, you know, there's a couple of these that have slipped through the cracks. So he apparently got this one like three weeks ago. So he already just got it. Because mm, he, someone reached out. I offered it to him because someone had it. I offered it to Rob maybe a year or so ago and he didn't like the price it was. Uh-huh. And then a couple weeks ago, through somebody else, Rob reached out if I could go find one. I'm like, dude, I, I can't just go find these things. Right. So he was tracking them down. I'm glad he got it. And then later in the video, if you see here, the screenshot right here, last year at uh, Squared Circle Expo, Toy Vomit had that prototype, that Titantron. And I said, hey, dude, Rob collects his shit. He might want that. Like, I'll oh. go introduce you guys. And I had them talk. I said, God, I said, Hey, you know, this is Toy Vomit, Rob. I said, he's got this prototype. I don't know if you have it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I guess he, it's the same thing. I guess he had gotten it from someone else along the line. So that's mm. not even the Toy Vomit one. So there's more than one, you're saying? Yes. And what's what's that other, that silver one? Is that a TNA? I have no clue because he doesn't really talk about it in the video, and I'm really not sure what the hell that is. It looks like a ruthless aggression. It's a ruthless, for sure. But, but it look, know. you know what it looks like? It looks like one of those TNA ruthless ones. You know? Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I don't know what that singlet is. Is it gray, Rob, like, gray singlet? I don't know. You can't tell. <sighs> but, but pretty I, pretty damn cool, man. I always think it's cool when, um, I hate to say the old timers, but guys not from our generation collect their stuff. Agreed. You know, I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I love that he has it displayed. It's all organized. It's fucking really cool in my Nothing opinion. Nothing wrong with being proud of yourself. Absolutely um, not. And even Rob graciously, I introduced him to Landon Postel, and he signed his uh, ultimate for him, which looked oh, awesome. Wow. So. Very, very cool. Does Landon have like a big collection of signed figures now? Yes, for <coughs> sure. That's cool. Very cool. Uh, also, guys, Powertown Remco's, the pre-orders end on April 8th. So make sure you get those Power Towns. I'm not quite sure. Like, okay, full disclosure. Brian and I know that Magnum TA bonus thing, but it's under the table. We can't publicly say. And I don't know if they're ever going to make it public, so I don't quite know what's going on with that. All I know is it's fucking cool. Yeah, so same. It, I have nothing to add to it, but yeah, we know it's sweet. So, so I don't yeah. know if that means if you order it, that's what you're going to get. I don't know. Yeah, don't know the deets. I don't know the deets. I will tell you this. The TNA Wrestling pre-order is getting close. And I saw, I think, two of them you showed me on your phone, and those look 
fucking nuts. They're sick. I've seen them all in full detail. They're sick. I love it. Um, you guys have anything else for follow up? I, I do have two things actually. All right, Ooh, go ahead, Mark. Go. Uh, number one, very important to us. We brought this up at the end of the podcast, but I last week, but I wanted to bring it up here. We have a brand new YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Major Pod Clips. So youtube.com slash at Major Pod Clips, or you can just search at Major Pod Clips. We are going to be putting snackable content on there uh, from the podcast, shorts f- from um, our lives, shorts from our vlogs. Um, but we're going to be doing sort of like, um, for example, the Hall of Fame from this episode will be on that channel in its entirety. Okay. And there's going to be a little extra edited. Uh, magic in there um so that is a channel that we would love your support on please guys we're trying to um get it monetized and fixed up and all that stuff but we need more followers so if you guys could give it a follow give it a subscribe uh hit the bell it's it's a free easy way to support us and our endeavors in a huge way nice. so i know there's ten thousand of you watching this uh, podcast on YouTube right now, please. Um, the link below. Just give us a follow. Thank you very much. And, and to, to to talk about YouTube for a second, I know when we said we get to a hundred thousand subscribers, we would do the incarnation and domination of Zach and Kurt figures. And it's been a while. We apologize, but we are filming it this month. We, it's in yes. the calendar. Guys. It's in it's the never, calendar. It's never been in the calendar before. It's, it's in. in the calendar. We are filming it this month. It's going to be a two parter. We're going to do Zach and Kurt first. And then we're going to do the Matt and Bryans. Believe it or not, more Matt and Bryans than Zach and Kurtz, I think. Mm, probably, huh? Shit. Which is fucking insane. Wow. So uh, we thank That's you crazy because there were so many uh, Matt Cardona or Zach Ryder figures. Well, when it's you gonna, own your own toy great, company. It, there's going to yeah. be a point when I'm fired and I can just lay back because Broski's just getting figures and I'm not. So <laughs> <laughs> I might it's take a nap true. during that filming. What else we got for follow-up, Mark? Okay, last thing. I kind of teased this, um, but uh, Upper Deck and AEW, they have a um, like an EPAC type of thing, right? So, so you can buy EPACs of their trading cards. It's a whole deal. It's kind of like playing a video game. You can collect cards digitally on your phone or on the website. Um, you can trade with your friends, all that stuff. I think you know, a lot of people do this kind of stuff, right, Brian? EPACs is kind of yeah, like of an NFT huge. type of deal. Very huge. huge. So AEW has a version of that. Okay. Now on April uh, 3rd. So if you're listening to this, it just happened on Wednesday. They, re- they released the AEW Skybox Metal Universe pack. Finally on EPAC, right? What's in that one? Mr. Long. Mark Long Sterling. Now I have uh, worked out a deal with Upper Deck, or they worked out a deal with me because it was a class action lawsuit. And if you combine multiple Mark Sterling cards in a digital form on there, you will get a fixed, signed, special version of the Mark Sterling card with no long. Get the long out Man. on April 3rd with the AEW Upper Deck uh, EPAC. Interesting. Wait, so you really hit, hit up two Marks to get a signed card? Um. As of this recording, I'm not sure how many marks, <laughs> but uh, but there is whatever it is, multiple marks. I don't know how many, but you like. Okay. It's a thing that you do if you have multiple Alex Reynolds or something like that. You Challenge know, you can, accepted. You combine them, and it becomes a diamond Alex mm. Reynolds or something. You know, like Very you get cool. a, a rare version. So that's a cool way to to collect. But you'll get a fixed version. So that's how you can get the long out. Get the long yeah. out. Get the long. Does that out. count for like ooh, Eddie Kingston and who else had that shit? Eddie you Long. Know what? I don't know. I'll find Ort- out. Ortiz Long. Ortiz Long. Stokely Long. Hathaway. Yeah. Mm, yeah. There's a lot of Longs. They're a big family. Yeah. Very like cool. the Dudleys of uh, AEW. Yeah. Premium Longs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. All right. Let's go to the news. And the news is brought to you by Paps Blue Ribbon. The Major Pod Network has partnered with our favorite adult beverage, Paps Blue Ribbon. Everybody needs some liquid courage to make their own weekly purchases, scratch that figure itch, and scratch that PBR itch. If you're listening to this, you're already a major mark. Now it's time to become a major PBR mark. Use hashtag MajorPBR and post your pictures and videos of you major marking out with some Paps. Paps. 
Pabst Blue Ribbon and the Major Pod Network, the tag team champions of the world. Of the world. Major PBR. Forever. Say this. The calm before the storm. This news here. There's some good stuff though this week, guys, and uh, some really good stuff. PBR, great stuff. Proud sponsor of Live 19. If you listen early, can't wait for it to listen Friday. It was a hell of a show. I was drinking a PBR on the way to the show. But uh, every single week, use the hashtag Major PBR. If we choose your picture or video, you will get a prize. This week comes from at the Wooks Nook at Major Pod. Even do the dog need some hashtag Major PBR? It's a pup's blue ribbon dog toy. <laughs> That's cute. Check that out. It's adorable. Cool. That's kind of uh I guess that, you know, is a parody and not quite illegal, but hey, it <laughs> yeah. is what it is. All right. Well, maybe, maybe PBR made it. This was interesting, guys. Macari. No seller fees. Zero. Mm. Un Believable, and I like first, it. I think I think they're looking. Hearing of this, I think they're looking to compete with the eBay, with the Edward Bay. But like, how? What are they? Are they gonna have like ads, like pop up ads? Then I'm not quite sure what's going on. There's if you're watching on YouTube, we have a whole like fucking disclaimer thing that that's not, I'm not reading it all right now. But uh, yeah, uh, the buyers I believe will have a payment processing fee at the time of the purchase. So I think the buyer will pay a little more. And that will get rid of the seller fees. Whoa. Interesting. So um, I think it's very, very interesting. I think this is a good way to Macari? compete. I still use Magari. I do not use it to buy, but I use it to, I'm sorry, I don't use it to sell. I use it to buy. Same. Same. I've I do, never used it. You've never purchased it? Never even purchased, yeah. Oh, I cruise it when I'm looking for stuff because it's randomly, you know, people do use it. Like you'll People find use it, gems. yep. Yep. I found some cool things on there. So yeah. I thought that was very interesting news. Uh, speaking of interesting news, it's mind a fun school undertaker just this sold wild. for thirty thousand dollars. It was a best offer that was a uh, that was taken at thirty thousand something. Wait, so wait, so they wanted more than that? Yeah, and they got like a best offer like thirty thousand. Dude, this I can't be like. Well, now, I, I believe it's a graded. It's a it's graded, graded sixty. Yeah. Now, if you know anything about fun schools, these are the Indian equivalents of Hasbro's, but they're not quite Hasbro. They are, but they're not. Mm, bro. You know? And uh, it has the jacket. The jacket is very, the figure is very, very rare to begin with. I wouldn't, people were accusing me that I was the one who bought this. I'm like, oh, pump the brakes. I, I ain't yeah. paying 30 grand on this. That is like absurd, that price to me. Like, I don't understand. I, do, I, I don't understand. But guys, what was uh, it listed? Well, it was listed for more than thirty three thousand. No, no, it was listed for thirty three. Listed for thirty three thousand. And it sold okay. for thirty something. They settled um, for like a three grand discount. Now, I don't recall ever seeing one of these men on card. I, that should be said, right? Yes, it's that rare. But thirty thousand dollars rare. If you have the money, then yeah. Okay, you do have the money. Would you ever pay that? No, because I don't want it. Right, so, well, so that, that's the thing. It. No, you I don't. Are the I, no, I don't, I don't want it. You I don't like fun schools. I have him loose. I don't collect him in on card. Oh, I guess that's the difference. And as a matter of fact, I have two loose, which I might now sell one of them because I have one with the jacket, one without. Good there is God. there is nothing on earth that I want for that amount of money. It, <sighs> I shouldn't say that. There are certainly things that I want for that amount of money, but no I just, collectible. I just can't fathom it. That's like. Really, if we step away from it, like a shittily made bootleg Hasbro figure. And, and the card on okay? schools always look shitty, too. They're all beat up. Yeah. It, it's true scarcity. You know, true scarcity here. Yeah, that's for sure. God Sometimes I, I think that we live in, in a little bit of a, of a bubble in that we are in a, like a major pod bubble, right? So like we have a, our community and our community collects what they collect and there is a wider wrestling figure collecting world out there there are people that are obsessed with LGNs people that are obsessed with that's Hasbros is oh, there, there there are people who came up to us at Square Circle Expo what are these big rubber guys right okay <laughs> well, certainly well, that's why we're there hold on before we before we move on from this is there 
large communities of people that are just like losing their shit over these fun school fun schools. No, no, no. So it's how would anybody? Community, pay but it's, this? it's it's I. I this is small okay. community, but they're rabid. I'm making this up, but to me, whoever bought this is like an OCD completist, and just had to have it. Like maybe you know what I mean, or diehard Undertaker fan. You never know. That's a stretch too, because like. If it's a on card, you got the red card you can get for 500 bucks, and it's... Let's also real, put this out, and I'm deal. sure it's going to get me a lot of flack. <sighs> expensive is all relative. So to us, this is nuts, but for some people, this is not that expensive. Like If you're dropping you $30,000 on this, you, think, you probably have a lot of fucking money. I was like, you think Donald Trump bought this? Like, who the fuck? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> dude. like, oh, whatever. Yeah, but like, I, okay, I, but I don't know, man, I think Bro, 30k but, is a lot of money to rich people too, dude. Okay, but you tell there's how many times we hear sports cards that go well over thirty thousand dollars. Well, yeah. like, like, like in, in the sports card world, thirty thousand. I don't want to say it's nothing, but it is nothing. Cards sell for millions. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, there are some rich people out there that let would like wipe their butt with thirty three thousand. But, but why would somebody even list it for that? <laughs> I mean, maybe there was one sold before. I don't. I, I honestly, I'm not really in the know about this. If anyone knows I'm, I'm, in the I'm chat, thinking, like, or I'm the comments, let us Shark know. Tank, like all the sharks are very well off. Like 30k is still a lot of money. Like, Bro, I mean, listen, 30. Let's let's, let's not take them. that back. 30. K, let's let's take that back. 30k is a lot of fucking money. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But I'm saying you don't know what other people's situations are or what is their this wants the most are. expensive wrestling figure of all time. I, I don't want to. I think it takes the cake, right? It might it's be up there be, right? that it, we know of, sale wise. I'm not sure off the top of my head, to be honest. That's why I don't understand it, because I would never spend it. But like the, the rhythm and blues, Greg Valentine, like like there is a story there. There's a history there. Prototype there. though, like no. Like, but I'm saying I would understand that going for a, a, a large amount. But that's why I don't get this one. I don't get it. Listen, I don't get it either. But you, uh, Unless maybe, there's maybe, some sort of giant community of fun school people that we don't know about. There's that. not I a giant like, community, but there's a small, rabid community. That's for sure. Okay. But hey, if, if anyone could update us with this, please do. And we'll talk about it next week in follow-up because we, we're just reporting on it. We don't know all the news. Yeah. So if anybody has any updates, please let us know. <laughs> Joe, and, uh, Joe Hersky wrote, imagine in 30 years this could be the smoke train. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, All right. With Harry Balzania on the Harry back. Harry Balzania. Yeah. <laughs> I got a graded Harry Balzania card back smoke train. <laughs> All right, guys. DDP uh, Epic Toys. Uh, it's like the first ultimate retro, which I really dig. It's cool. I thought it was cool. I think it's incredible. Is um, what, I was always. What exactly is. That is the release of it, though. Like that's the figure. that's the like, only way to get release? it. Yeah. Okay, so I was when they first showed this off, I was thinking, where are they going to put all these extra fucking hands and shit? But now we know, it's like ultimate style and a nice, a nice package. It's looks looks great. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you are you know a mint on card retro collector, you can like take it out and display it like a regular retro. Right. Which I like. I will be getting this. I'll be opening it. But I uh, I dig it. I dig it. The first Hopefully deluxe cool. retro. I like yeah. Epic Toys is really, you know, they've come a long way since that 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 Nick Aldis. <laughs> I actually was just saying that to someone this weekend because figure collections was set up and had a lot of their stuff, which is also going to be. We'll, in the we'll talk about like, them in a little bit, yeah. But like, man, is that that that's basically what I said? How far they have come from that Aldis that was like a rubber ducky bath toy to this right. is pretty nuts. We'll talk about that later in the show. Uh, we saw. New WWE Legends, which blew my mind. I think. See, I don't know for sure. I think this was leaked, and then they showed the you know the I studio think photos. So too, right? Yeah. We got Hogan with the fucking guitar from the music video. Three minute warning, which I did not see coming. Yeah. And Big Bubba alternate uh, head with the UWF title. Look at this Hogan with the guitar from the music video. This is really cool. I as a must have fronter for me. I think. <sighs> I absolutely fucking love it, and and we've been saying too many Hogan's, but I fuck I fucking I'm, dig it. I'm gonna say it. There's too many. It's God fucking. Damn but here, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, 
Uh, first of all, the big bubble looks good. I'm going to display it with the... How the you have titles blowing my mind. I'm, I'm going to display it as WCW Big Bubba. I didn't even know what UWF was, you know, so I'm going to display it. was the same it. before as WWF runs. Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm going to display it with the WCW head. But it's a two-in-one. You kind no, of... no, I'm not getting both. There's absolutely not happening. Bro, this is like rookie Big yeah, Bubba and WCW. That's fine, Big but Bubba. I'm not... The whole boss man run is in between these two figures. You realize that, right? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not doing that though. But there, and there's a variant. It's blue and white. Like well, I'm definitely not doing that. I'm just gonna do the one. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I, I d- think I dig it. To me, the, du- the WCW the boss, Bubba in the blue the du- as a rookie, the du- and then in the white is Big Bubba Rogers from WCW. I'm not. I'm not. If that's what you want to do, fine. I'm I, not doing I that. Think it has to be done. The box has Big Bubba, like WCW Big Bubba on the box. So that's what I'm counting it as. And it's I like the other added guy. value. I like the added value, and I like the the, the title. I also, I, I love the three-minute warning. I think three-minute warning and Big Bubba are going to be shelf-warming motherfuckers. So. Nah, I think the three-minute warning are so toyetic that they'll move. I, I love it. Rosie and Jamal really, We didn't incredible. even know Rosie was an Under option. Under a deal. Right? So yeah. cool, yeah. It's really cool. Uh, uh, there's like, And the first ever three-minute warning figures, there was never three-minute warning figures ever. Yeah, they were canceled. So that's really cool to me. Canceled Ruthless guys. I, I cannot wait to get these. Uh, long overdue, in my opinion. And hopefully we get a superhero in training, Rosie, down the line. Yeah, maybe it'll be very doable, with, even with just this mold, you know? So I am I am all in on this uh, this Legends line. I love that Legends are back. Absolutely love it. I think I got a tap on that Hogan. Like. That's fine. That's Oof. fine. All right, let's go back to uh, figure collections. They showed off some cool stuff at Squared Circle Expo. They showed uh, the the Buff Bagwell, the Colt Cabana. Um, things are moving slow at figure collection, but they're coming. You know, we love I, Jack. I held a lot of these in my hand. I Colt had the samples. Was with him all weekend. Are there three different Cabanas? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, the Colt damn. is so cool. That's such a classic singlet. I don't. Well, it looks them. great in person. Yeah. The Kyoto, I think, looks better in person than we, we kind of ripped it apart last week. The Patriot looks incredible. Yeah, yeah the Patriot's looks really nice. I love the Patriot. I love the Buff. Buff looks really good. Got the hat. I'm glad Buff's getting another product. So, uh, figure collection, doing some great stuff. And they also showed up their Glacier, the Jeff Jarrett's, the Macho Man. Um, and they're, they're Ultimo Dragons and Sunny. Do you see that they signed them? Ultimo and Sunny were there and signed one? Might be in the vlog ski, but yeah, I, uh, oh, I was yeah. checking them out. It's the packaged, you know, f- sample. So, got to be close. Shipping soon, I would say, from from China. Yeah, so I hope Figure Collection, I hope they can just start banging stuff, up, banging stuff out a little faster. Because I think uh, their product is great. Jack's great. Just They just need some momentum. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, we got the British Bulldog Big Shots finally announced. Oh, that's cool. I love it. This looks great. First ever British Bulldog wrestling buddy. Is yours still available or is it gone? Oh, it's still available, baby. Oh, that's is it's just like still an evergreen thing. I, I I think so. So oh. pick it up on uh Big Shots. The Bulldog looks great with the braids. I really really dig that Davy Boy Smith. The, the British. Did you watched the Davy Boy A and E special. Haven't watched it yet. I'm a little behind on my uh, specials. Yeah, there's like a lot to watch. The Trinity Ringside Exclusive is in stock. I don't even think we even announced it to the public, but it's in stock and it glows in the dark. That's crazy. So get it now. Popping uh, packaging there by TCB. Super toyetic ringside collectibles. The only place to get it. Mark Mark's holding it up. I don't even have one yet. Mark's holding it up. You son of a bitch. Wait, what? What do you mean? How does Mark have that? You don't have it yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Oh, I just I literally just got a package today with uh, the big rubber guys and, and the two Trinities. Well, damn, I don't have it. But yeah, it glows That's in the dark. Very, very toyetic. Dark. Caught up with my girl Trin today. I told her the TNA locker room misses her dearly. And perfect timing with her being involved in WrestleMania 40. Right. So pick that up i wonder if you can get that sign of like a glow-in-the-dark uh paint pen i'm sure why not that'd be pretty cool uh also guys uh wrestle exclusive major bendy 
Matt Cardona. What do you think, Brian? Look at that package, huh? Wow, he just couldn't couldn't let uh, me have my own thing, huh? Yeah, well, get in. What do you mean? I, I was at ECW too, pal. You know, look Yeesh. at that bloody. That's the one-legged tights. It's kind of a callback to my WW ECW days, and that's the gear I wore in the ECW arena against Bully Ray. Oh, cool. So there it is. It is a WrestleCon exclusive pick. How did it feel to wear the gonna... one-legged tights again? It's only a bloody version? There's no... Yeah, only a bloody version. Got it. Uh, I hate the one-legged tights because it, it pulls down on that one side. Yeah. I just don't like it. But yeah, I had to do terrible. it for that one show and uh, get it now. And, uh, you know, there's a Brian in that style packaging. There's a Sabu. There's a there's Sandman. Yeah. This whole collection. So pick it up at WrestleCon. And then I'm sure, you know, if there's some leftovers, I'll be putting them on whatnot, bring them to shows and stuff like that. But let's just say it starts off as a WrestleCon exclusive. A launch you know what I'm party. Saying? A launch party. Uh, also, we have, guys, this is big. Big rubber guys on sale now powers of pain dusty roads all month the order closes april 3rd i don't even want to use the term pre-order here folks it's an order <laughs> i'm so pumped i'm so excited of dusty the line so cool, powers man. of pain you know, we did not get Barbarian. We were supposed to get Barbarian back in the day. Warlord's wearing fucking trunks. It's yeah, so Warlord's wrong. A mess, too. So it's cool to, like, you know, do them right. And uh, I, to have the American Dream in this line, it's incredible. It's just I, an honor, man. The, it's so freaking cool. And I think, obviously, Power Spray is amazing, but people are, have been ecstatic all day today about this pre-order yeah the, the 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 numbers uh you know are through the roof we've been seeing the sales is incredible you have all month to support uh and come down to wrestlecon uh of course we'll have that macho man wrestlecon exclusive there which we anticipate will sell out but uh with dusty and the powers of pain man this this 2024 is gonna be hard to top these guys in, in the next set for series eight but man jeff jones bought himself a uh dusty today oh uh, it was it was great seeing jeff jones at AEW. by the way oh yeah he sent me enough photos and videos that i'll, I'll be just, posted about this adam match for the whole year needed. yeah i'll be i love i want jeff jones to be my personal social media guy yeah like liter good, literally like i didn't even like finish the match and my phone has fucking videos fucking pictures Je yeah. jeff jones is the man if he's listening jeff you're the man but yeah powers of pain dusty no variants, no chases, just three superstars, MajorBendies.com. And, of course, the Major Bendies Big Rubber Guys commercial is up. Check that out on social media. We want to thank John Space Carlo. Um, it was a lot of fun filming that. So that's finally out there for, for all you guys to see. So I thought I got fired from um, doing the uh, audio. We thought so, too. I don't know how. John Carlo was telling me he was like, "Yeah, you sent me audio that was that was too hot and it was popping." And I said, "No fucking way, dude! Like I recorded it in my own podcast studio." No fucking studio. way, dude! And then what did he say? And that was it. Yeah, but he used it and it didn't. It wasn't hot and it didn't pop. So I don't know what he's talking about. I I'm not trying to be a dick right now, but I thought he just said you weren't good at it. <laughs> well, he, well, that's he was saying. Why'd like you do a voice? Like your vibe wasn't the vibe of what we wanted, so he didn't like. Well, it. to be fair, Mark didn't see the commercial. I don't know, yeah. no, man. I'm just saying this. Was sent me lines, and I said I and I also I sent them like many different ways. I was like, I read it like this. I read it like this. I read it like an announce. I was like, I don't know what this is, where this is going, what, whatever the fuck. But I'll read these lines in many different ways. But he used one, and I was in there. Thought it came out great. All right. Do we awesome. have Do we have any other news, guys? All right, well, we got some ringside news. Uh, check out Ringside Collectibles WrestleMania sale going on now. New in stock. Elite 108 with Brock Lesnar, Bronson Reed, Omos, LA Knight, Chelsea Green, and Terry Gordy. Coming in soon, SummerSlam Elites with Lex Luger, Undertaker, X Pac, and Kane. All four figures include a build, I'm sorry, include a piece for a build a fill. Build a figure. <laughs> build a Jungle. fill. Elite 109 with. Seth Rollins, Dominic Mysterio, Damian Priest, Shinsuke Nakamura, Cody Rhodes, and Bailey. Elite 21 with Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. And Elite Top Picks with Roman Reigns, Gunther and Mysterio. Uh, I thought I saw some other lineups during the week, like some like greatest hits with like a Hogan or something like that. Was that not on ringside? Did you dream that? I know. 
could have swore I saw that somewhere. All right, well, up next is the Ringside Top 10. This episode of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast has been brought to you by Ringside Collectibles, the number one online retailer of WWE action figures. Go to WrestlingFigures.com and make a purchase, and when you do, use discount code MAJOR at checkout to save 10%. Side top 10, we got number 10, Rhea Ripley, Elite 102. Number 9, Solo Sokoa, Elite 107. Number 8, Pretty Deadly, Elite 110. Number 7, Cody Rhodes, Ultimate 21. Number 6, LA Knight, Elite 108. Number 5, The Usos, Ultimate Edition 2-pack. Number 4, Bruno Sammartino, Elite 110. Yeah, there were a lot new lineups. I'm not Yeah, crazy. I'm on ringside right now. Uh, greatest Hits 4, Hogan, Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio. Okay. I completely uh, so what, what's this elite? What's this Elite 110? Who's in here? Elite 110. Roman Reigns, Austin Theory, Rhea Ripley, Pete Dunne, a.k.a. Butch, which we've seen renders for, Kit Wilson and Elton Prince, and that is the green Bruno San Martino that was pulled from the Legends. Yep. And it has listed here that the chase is Butch. Okay. That's cool. Um, so, okay, so number three is Rhea Ripley Elite 110. Number two, Cody Rhodes. And number one, again, we didn't talk about this, Outsiders. You could pre-order the two-pack, the Ultimate Outsiders. Yes, I could have swore I saw a, a, a lineup with, like, the, the JD guy from... Uh, from... Um, the Judgment Day. There is there a basic uh, lineup? No, I mean the basic is well now it's called main event, which is still very difficult. Could have swore I saw that. Main event one four eight is John Cena, Hulk Hogan, Carmelo Hayes, Roddy Piper, and Caden Carter, and a variant of the John Cena. So, what am I thinking then? I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh, here, we, here we go. Best, best of Ultimates with the Rock and Batista. I don't know what I was thinking with that. That that. Jamie well, what's number one on the top ten, by the way? It was the the outsiders. Oh, outsiders number one. Here's... Outsiders number one. Well, guys, is it time? It's time. It's time for the 2024 Major Wrestling Figure Podcast Hall of Fame. Do, 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 do. Can't wait till I get the call in, Doc Cornswoggle. Welcome, everyone, to the Hall of Fame oh. the Major Reservoir Podcast 2024. Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Guys, it's a big year. Maybe the biggest ever for wrestling and wrestling figures. So it's uh, an honor to induct these figures tonight into the major wrestling figure podcast Hall of Fame. But before we do that, I think we should say he was already inducted. So people yeah. aren't being yeah, like, sure. well, people are this guy? listening and watching along. I think they're going to be like, well, why didn't they pick that Hogan figure? Because we already did, pal. This has been going on for a couple of years. Yeah, the class of 2019. We had the Macho Man Randy Savage LJN. We had the WCW Galoob Stick. We had the Hasbro Series 1 Hulk Hogan. The Defining Moments, WrestleMania 7, Macho Man. 
And the classic Superstar Series 1 Ultimate Warrior. What a great inaugural Dude, class. What I'm a thinking. freaking great. Line up. Oh, Those what? look like Hall of Fame figures to me. They this is do. this is where we get it. things get a little off the rails here. Things get a little off the rails. Class mm-hmm. of 2020. We have the Hulk Hogan, LJN in the yellow trunks. We have Hasbro, Series 1, Macho Man Randy Savage. We have Jack Specific, Bone Cruncher Series 1, Shawn Michaels. We have the Slim Jim Macho Man, which I think was made a couple months prior. <laughs> and <laughs> little, the, little too excited, I would say. Weird things AWA. were happening in 2020, okay, guys? Hey, yeah. I'm all for that macho being in. And the then macho is on the AWA yeah. tag team, Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors. We go to the class of 2021. LJN, Hot Rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hasbro Series 1, Jake the Snake Roberts. Superstar Series 3, Jack Specific Mankind. Classic Superstar Series 2, Ric Flair. This one, which, ugh. Ultimate Edition, Hulk Hogan, which has since been redone. Hollywood and made better. Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. But now has this one got a little asterisk and it's the the new one, the running no, change? No, gotta this be. It's it. gotta no. be. No, no, this, right? no, this one's in, not the other one. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's how it works. And also, Wrestling Buddies from Tonka, Hulk Hogan. That's Great. The class of 2022. LJN, King Kong Bundy. Series 1 Hasbro, Andre the Giant. Perfect. Jackson, Superstar Series 1, Bone Cruncher, Razor Ramon. Hollywood Hulk Hogan, Classic Superstars, Jack Specific. Defining Moments, Bret Hart with One the Canadian One of my favorite of all time. And the Ultimate Warrior Wrestling Buddy. I think that's a great class, class of 2022. That is a good class. Great class. Cla- class of 2023 gets a little interesting as well. <laughs> because we have LJN, Iron Sheik, Hasbro, Ultimate Warrior in the White Trunks, Jack Specific Superstar Series 1, Gold Dust, Jack's Classic Superstars, Hawk and Animal, Legion of Doom in the, uh, the red shoulder pads. Another one that should not have been in yet. <laughs> This one's nuts. The Mega Powers, Hulk Hogan, and Macho Man rings out exclusive. I mean, you guys shit on that figure all the time. I think it's great. Yeah. And the Storm Collectibles, Jushin Thunder Liger. So after a couple of years of figures going in that we don't think should have, by not, this is what I mean by that. I'm, not enough time. Is, some of those figures had just come out. Yeah, and I think the excitement is clouding the judgment. Yes, and I think people... Yeah. We we have we have a whole panel, right, uh, uh, of judges and voters, and I think they were sometimes thinking like figure of the year. This is we're not doing figure of the year. We're doing Hall of Fame best figures of all time. So we made a new rule this year, which we might have you know should have done earlier, five year rule, and that would have saved that like Hogan real ultimate. Yeah. That would have saved the the uh, the mega powers, even that Jushin Thunder Liger. So, guys, we had a, a huge uh, amount, the most amount of voters we've ever had, uh, a committee, a voting committee, if you will. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I'm very excited to talk about, you know, the, the next the next class. Are you guys excited? You get your Let's votes in? Yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, uh-oh. 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 Oh, my God, folks. Oh, you're oh my God. Uh, rest to the nines. Wow. <laughs> The results are in. Oh my god! <laughs> Save some the for the rest of us. Have now. been tabulated. Oh, Jeez. Well, hey, let D do it. Everyone, he's the one who actually fucking counted these votes. Yeah. Did we get any like uh, close calls or any landslides? Yeah, there were some close calls in certain categories, but thankfully those ties were broken. All right, D. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you uh, run through this since you got them all. For the class of 2024. Wait, in the category of? LJN, Toys, Wrestling Superstars, Mean, wow. Mean, wow. and a part of the Much manager's deserved. department released in 1987. Much deserved. I was, figure, he was on my list. He wasn't on my list, and I was kind of kicking myself after. The, like that, that was a great call. I mean... Listen, not saying wrestling backstage announcers aren't important now, 
but they were really important back in the day. And Mean Gene was all over the place. And to have that figure and you have the microphone, the perfect, you know, mouth level for your other wrestling figures. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was just great. Now, there's also like there's a weird variant where like one doesn't have the WF logo on the mic. That was like a, you know, a mistake variant, if you will. You know, I don't think that was done on purpose, but uh, unbelievable figure. I'm so glad he's in the Hall of Fame. Unbelievable man, too. Mean Gene was the fucking best. But Pretty what a great figure. Cool, he's yeah. smaller yeah. than the other figures. Yeah. Yeah. I love great, great. Yeah. Great scale. Like you said, fun to have when you're a kid. And Mean Gene's iconic. So it's cool that he's in the uh, Major Pod figure Hall of Fame. It's funny because they're, he originally was supposed to have like hands to his hips, kind of like Bret Hart pose with no microphone. I actually have that prototype in my collection. I'm glad they switched it up to this with the mic. Way better. He needs the microphone. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So if we ever make a smart mark, I want him just like this. <laughs> the, doing the, the finger point and then the it's mic in someone's mouth. Collusion pre-show smart mark. There you go. <laughs> so congratulations to the LJN Mean Gene Okerland. For what do I got next, D? For category number two. For Hasbro, WWF, and Lewis Galoob Toys, WCW, the winner is the 1992 Hasbro, yeah. WWF, figure assortment, Seven Undertaker. Man, what a classic figure. I remember finding this at Toys R Us when it came out, not knowing it was coming, and my mind was blown with the Tombstone Tackle. <laughs> um, all those matches where he hit the tombstone tackle. He said that that lefty hand would prefer for a choke slam. Originally, it was supposed to be for an urn. Little known fact. But it definitely, you know, we didn't know that when we were kids, and it was perfect for a little choke slam. Uh, I did not have this on my list, and again, kicking myself. I did I not have it on my, on my list, list either. For two years, three years. Yeah. Maybe. It's a it's a classic. I it's a classic. Great. It's like it's yeah needs to be in. Absolutely needs to be in, um, you know, the, it's later it's with a darker hair and the jacket, but this one was just so perfect. Like it's the, figure, think about it. it's the undertaker's rookie figure. And, 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 you know, undertaker went on to become one of the biggest stars in the business where the, theoretically this could have been like, he could have been a Skinner or a berserker or nails. Well, we wouldn't be talking about it, like you know, but he turns into the fucking undertaker. So absolutely love that. What do we got next, D? For the third category, for Jack Specific WF slash WWE Bone Country Action and Toy Biz WCW and the original San Francisco Toy Makers ECW line, we have the 1999 uh, let's go. original San Francisco Toy Maker ECW figure assortment Rob Van Dam. First ECW fig in the Hall of Fame. How nice. timely as we head to Philly for WrestleMania. Wow. RVD, ECW one, top of my list. So I'm glad. I feel like it's been on my list a couple of years now. So I'm glad that it's finally in. Comes with that TV title, a bat, and a two by four, correct? Yes. And uh, at the time that this was released, man, like it was such a hot get because RVD was on fire in popularity. Like it was a big deal. And you can, but he doesn't have the finger, uh, you know, the thumbs posing, but you can do the RVD. Taunt. It feels like it. It's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. That uh, that that package is iconic. I have the same style packaging for my WrestleCon exclusive Bendy. G plug. G plug. Uh, I actually voted for Taz instead of uh, RVD. All right. But I'm glad we have an ECW representation in here this year. Very well deserved. What we got next. For for the fourth category, for non-BCA, Bone Country Action, Jack Specific, WF, slash WWE figures, we have the 2004 Jack Specific, wow. WWE, Classic Superstars, Collector Series 2, George the Animal Steel. Wow. I, I voted for this one. Um, in my mind, it's the flocked version. Of that I had a couple questions about this, so I did not vote for this. Yeah. But. There's a variant, right? I mean, there's the so which the, one is like that's another thing. Which one is the flock is the real one? Me too. That's how I envision it. I envision yeah. it flocked as real. And at the time, I I, I remember thinking there's like two or three different versions of just the flock, like some right. hair, medium hair, even more hair. 
There is, yeah. It's, yeah, but that's just like how it was applied at that factory, like heavy or light handed. I feel like you can't count that as a true variant, I don't think. Unless I you're not hairy and not hairy, or flocked and not flocked. Yeah. Yeah. But it comes with a, what is that? Like a wooden stick? <laughs> it's club? a freaking club that like club? the Ahmed Johnson uh f- stomp figure comes All right, with. That's a random one, but it comes with a turnbuckle, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, an iconic figure, in my opinion. I'm glad that George Animal Steel is uh, in the, the Major Wrestling Fear Podcast Hall of Fame. And maybe one of these days, Jazzwares will make a Matt Taven and you could do a moonsault onto that with. All right, sick. <laughs> Look it up. For the fifth category, for Mattel WWE, the 2015 wow. Mattel wow. WWE defining moment thing. It's Sting. How fitting. Sting's last match this year, and he's inducted into the major wrestling figure podcast hall of fame. He's already in for his galoob, but he's in again. It's defining moment. Sting, I think, is an excellent figure. Oh, so good. The box. I love so this good. figure. I've always loved this figure. It was just like a home run when this came out. Like they just nailed it. Like what yep. like you, there's nothing else you could have wanted out of this, right? An absolute um, fronter. And this will be very hypocritical because I early in the show I said no more Hogan's, but it's crazy to think that Mattel, it's been years now since they've been able to make Sting figures. And I'm like, man, I'm really itching for some more Sting figures. That's you know? right. I absolutely love a great, great induction. For the sixth and final category, the miscellaneous category, we have the 1990s. Tonka WWF Wrestling Buddies Assortment One Macho King Randy Savage. Oh yeah! Wow! I Hell love yeah! It. It was I on love my it. list. I just think they're just so sentimental to people's childhoods that they can't be overlooked. You know, I don't think DiBiase will ever quite make the cut here. I don't know. Maybe next year. Maybe, but I I really doubt it. But I think the three, you know, Macho Man, Hogan, Warrior, all in the Hall of Fame now. Their rightful place. I can't see anyone from Series Two ever really get in there. I don't think so either. They were just too obscure. But maybe, man. maybe the LOD. Maybe, maybe it's tough though. I could see one day maybe like a uh, a bash and brawl, like going to like Hogan or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. But D, you you tallied up the votes. What was who won by a landslide and who was really close? Anybody? Undertaker. The won uh, by a landslide. Landslide. Wow. The Rob Van Dam ECW was uh, won by one vote. Damn. Wow! Come on. And uh, there's just so many. There's so many figures to pick from. Right. It's hard. It's not man. Like, like in in baseball, like there's only like certain people that are even added to the list. You and and we're we're always tweaking. We're always tweaking the categories. Right. This is what we felt was the best way. And maybe next year, hey, we're up for suggestions. If you want to switch the categories next year. You know, but this is just what we had for this year. I think we did the same exact one last year. Um, Next year, I think we vote somebody out too. No, no. <laughs> I, I think I do think I would like to see next year. I'd like to see a maybe a WCW San Francisco figure in there or or Toy Biz. But how, how do how do we switch up the 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 categories then? You know, I don't know I'm saying? just saying maybe they'll get more votes. Is what I'm saying. We don't have to switch what we're doing. So what we what we do is you know we have like for the ballad like for instance LJN you could pick five. Hasbro slash Galoob, you can pick five. Uh, for all of them, you can pick five, except for miscellaneous, you can pick ten. So that's what we do. I'm up for I'm up for, for changing. I think a, a Bendem. I, I, I voted for a Diesel Bendem. Well, but I would love hard, to see a Bendem. I mean, when you sit down and start racking your brain to do it, it's not easy. Well, I start with my last year's list, and then I get rid of the ones that were in. Well, I <laughs> then I add. I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I guess that's what I should probably do too, because. Yeah, because if you voted for it last year, why wouldn't you vote it for it this year? I don't exactly. even know what my list has been the past four that's, years. That's what I'm saying, but I, I just like delete the phone note on my when it's done, and that's it. But okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, right. I mean, uh, what a great year. The Hall of Fame. It's always a, a fun time. But look at that class. That's a good class. Good, good looking class, class right there. Mean Gene, The Undertaker, Rob Van Dam, George Emil Steel, Sting, and Macho. At one point, I was going to try to collect all the Hall of Fame figures men on card. I, I still think that's a very cool thing, but some of them just make you Such broke. a random collection yeah. if you displayed it. 
I know that's the thing. I'd be so. Brian, would, would you like to um do a speech for uh one of these guys? Uh, yeah, for my good friend RVD. <laughs> RVD did say in that video that that it's his most, you out. most autographed item of his career. So now it that is. Yep, holds its rightful place. I would not have guessed that. That's what he said. Just said in his video today. That's incredible. That is really Yeah, cool. the um, class of 2024. And now I'm looking at my list. Rockers two packs got it. I go for that every year. That's another the year. classics? No, the rock Hasbro. Hasbro. Ooh. Rockers two pack. Wait, how is that not in yet? I'm looking at my list to see who got some. Oh, DiBiase number two, I vote for every year. Still not in. DiBiase number two is good. Yeah. I voted for one, two, three, kid. I want that in there. Yeah, I think just for significance, for sure. Yeah, so much cool stuff. I mean, uh, I think I vote for this every year too. Scott Hall Smash and Slam. Mm, that's true. I actually vote for the DBIC, uh buddy every year. <laughs> I, I vote for the the giant R three every year. Uh, I think I put that in there too. Big Show, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, 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 I voted for Giant Smash and Slam. Oh. I vote Flair Galoob. TNA Abyss Marvel. I voted for Abyss and Jeff Jarrett. Wow, that's so cool. I would like, yeah, you're right. I would like a Smash Slam, but you know, <laughs> we 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 put Bone Crunchers, original San Francisco Toy Maker, ECW, and, and WCW Toy Business one category because that was like the the era, you know. Right, yeah, but you can still pick five. That's still oh no, like, right, right, right. Chance to get it, yeah. So, D, is, since you're you know, D, you're the numbers guy. Any other? Were there any category changes you'd recommend for next year, D? I know you're a big numbers guy, logistics guy. Uh maybe I don't know. The Galoops don't get much love. But I don't yeah, know. They, but I don't think I don't think they deserve their own category. That's the problem. Yeah, well, no I think it's fine. I, I do vote for the Galoops, but I think it's fine because that just means that the Hasbros are more deserving until they're not. Until right. they're until that flare Galoob does sneak in. Right. And there is a Galoob in the first year. Yeah. That's and how epic it was. Hey, how about this to crunch on Caden in the chat just wrote next year will be five years of AEW Jazzwares. I mean, we're not gonna do an AEW category, but it's certainly available for miscellaneous. But now yeah, and I think actually I contemplated this year that a little bit of the bubbly. So I mean it does have, you know it's possible. It's possible. Something to think about. Something and only about. five more years before you can vote for the smart mark sterling. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> I would like a, a Zach Ryder to go, and that would be fitting for me. I'm good. Four years for a Joe Shoes Bendy. Oh my <laughs> God. God. Four years to wait for that oh Joe Shoes Bendy to get in. Oh, my God. D, you, you saw all the votes. What would you think was the most head-scratcher vote? You're like, what? You picked that? <laughs> the Amber Moon basic. No who name who, who picked it, but just like, you're like, what? You picked that? <laughs> Anything stick out to you, D? I'm scrolling. Not the best audio. It's okay. Hold on. <laughs> that, makes it, that makes it better. <laughs> Akeem Hasbro. Oh, that's mm. interesting. Somebody must just really you have just put all of Series One in because they're Series yeah. One. That's gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, I guess. But that person must have just had Akeem as a as a top guy. Yeah. Flesh Funk is a good figure, but it was a little random. Hall of Fame. I mean, it's a great figure, it's but Hall of Fame is a obscure. stretch. It's an obscure one. Yeah. yeah. People have their own reasons for voting, that's but that's right. why there's... Yeah, I know. It could be like, man, that Flash Funk Bone Crunch was my top guy in my fig fan when I was a kid. I loved it. You know, it's just, it yeah, was it's, a great figure. It's your sentimental attachment to whatever, you know? Right. Well, let's get ready for next year, boys. All yeah. right. Let's do it. All right. Well, up next, weekly purchases brought to you by Major Bendis. All right. Big out to my house. I'll bring my guys. You have yours. I got Sergeant Slaughter. And I got Rick Flair. Woo! Here's Andre the Giant. And here's Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. And Brian Mine. And Matt Cardona. They're so real. Can you tell the difference? Roster Cup. Video Silence. Big Rubber Guys. They're for real. Each sold separately on MajorBendies.com. Big Rubber Guys. Collect them all. So 
Some might cost a little. Some might cost a lot. But I'm the thousand dollar broski. And your figures will be bought. <laughs> All right, weekly purchases brought to you by Major Bendy's. Get your big rubber guys, Dusty and Powers of Pain, right now over on MajorBendy's.com. And hey, right now, there might be some leftover Live 19 exclusive Major Bendy's because there was an exclusive Major Bendy at Live 19. Could be available right now on MajorBendy's.com. But every single week, use the hashtag MajorBendy's. If we choose your picture or video, you're going to get a prize. This one comes from Benaz Buff Miff. Reunited once again, Macho Bunny and the Easter Man. Uh-huh. Did I mix that up? Oh, well. It's uh, a picture of the Macho Man and the Easter Bunny, and then the bendies of Macho Man and an Easter Bunny. Adorable. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. All right. Weekly purchases. What did you guys get? What do you want to talk about? Battle of the Bam Bams. Ringside collectibles. Use discount code MAJOR. Yeah, Save yourself I, I 10%. I thought you would have built the executioner by now. Well, I have two. Ah, here. you son of a bee. I, Ready I, to bust open and build my executioner, build my. Kind of along the lines of what I just said, Broski, Big Bubba Rogers. This, but to me, this is a this is like a two and one -er for sure. Yeah. This still is that figure, but anyway, it's a fight for another day. Elite Collection 108 in stock, ringside collectibles. Um, I mean. Oh, it's just so highly anticipating this Bam Bam figure because, you know, we got Michael Hayes and it didn't feel like we were ever going to get Terry Gordy. I absolutely love it. How about Terry, Terry Bam Gordy's Bam dark Bam side? Gordy. Terry Gordy's dark side airs and his figure comes in within a week, which is pretty freaking awesome. I fucking love it. I really I do. I do wish he was a little more a little thicker. Yeah, a little thicker, huh? A little thicker. You know, Mattel doesn't like to give people their, their quads that they... Should have pretty cool likeness. To me, this is like 80s Freebird because of his hair. Yep. Because his hair was a little bit more straightened later in his career in his Japanese run. Alternate sea grips. And then, here it is, folks. Wow. Look how this comes, man. It's so great. Soft. Man, this is a high quality soft goods. I'm not going to do this all right now, but you haven't done it yet. No, no, no. I only, I only got one. I asked. Uh, I ordered another one from Ringside. Oh wow! Okay. This, How about to this me, you got to display axe. both. I'm freaking going for it right now. You can. Uh, while he does that, I will show off that I got uh, Omas. Look Whoa. at this big boy! What a huge figure! Like he's a huge, huge man. Yes. But the actual figure, this might be the biggest, tallest wrestling figure, like, you know, within a scale. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. Wow. Because he is legit seven, whatever, it's right? It's a ginormous figure. He has this the entrance outfit that comes off. Really looks great. This Omas. Such a huge, huge figure. Really cool. The face looks incredible. Entrance figure is great. This Terry Gordy, there's a, like, considering that this is two and one, there's a lot of, like, stuff in here, like, added a lot value. Of stuff. Because it's the full soft goods singlet, as well as like a giant cape and the head. Also got Brock Lesnar. And the axe. Oh, the axe is great. Got the Lesnar. This is the, I guess, the the, the definitive current Lesnar with the uh, the MMA shorts, the denim vest, the cowboy hat, the screaming, laughing, baby face face. Great figure. I love it. Good old Brock Lesnar right there. But guys, right. let's let's not talk about the sleeper of the set. Shh. I have to say. <laughs> Chelsea Green, and she is the chase in the blue. She can do the shh. One thing that was really weird to me. The likeness oh, is so good. The likeness Dude, is incredible. It's so, my kids were ecstatic to go get this in ringside. So I haven't opened mine, but obviously I opened four others because they yeah. each needed both versions. And it is so good. Like It's so good. It's such a good figure. Such a good figure. It has the hat, the skirt. One weird thing, she has the sh tattoo on her finger, on the blue, but not on the rainbow one. It, which I've checked. 
That is confirmed, yes. It's Don't know kind of why that is. Set. I believe this is supposed to be like her Royal Rumble gear from her return. It's missing a little green there, but oh, look at the execution. It looks great. It's crazy, right? But I, I'm so happy for Chelsea for her getting this figure. I absolutely love it. It's what, like, what is uh, her it's, It might be perfect. She excited about it? She loves it. Yeah, for sure. She loves it. So I'm glad that she got figures from her NXT run and her WWE run. Oh, the execution looks amazing. Yeah, there he goes. So there you see the, how the pants hang over wow. the boots. And now I'm going to do the Go finishing dig a touches. hole. Finishing touches here, which is the this giant hooded cape thing. And it even has like little grippies for his hands. You guys seeing that? Okay, I see. I see. So I think those are probably easier to just take the hands off. But wow. it's a great set. L.A. Knight, his first figures, uh, Bronson Reed. So it's a hell of an elite set. I it's dig it. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I love the, the two Chelsea's. I love the, the two Terry Gordy's. So um, absolutely love it. Big fan of the set. Hopefully Chelsea Green gets, gets a uh, little basic coming up soon. I love that. But if not, she has two chases. I'm sorry, two. Uh, well, she does have two chases, a basic and elite. But she has two elites. Got the skirt. You got the hat. The hat's fucking awesome. I love the skirt. It's like it's dude, it's an unbelievable figure. It's it's just so good. I absolutely love it. I don't think the boobs are big enough, but it is what it is. You know. Come on, Makina. Come on, Makina. All right, I think I this is unreal. Who would have ever thought? Wow, we have I love an executioner that executioner elite two in one, which that's so good to me is like the best possible thing because like. Terry Gordy is such an epic wrestler to me that, like, whatever, I get the execution is this funny, like, you know, little footnote in wrestling yeah. history. But to have, like, the real, you know, free bird Terry yeah. Gordy is way more important to me. But now you get both, the, you know, the best of both worlds here. I love it. Very cool. Uh, another thing I got that is very cool. Cheap plug, but I don't care. The Big Shots. Matt Cardona. How'd you get that? Death, I ordered it. Deathmatch King. It's funny because we just inducted the Macho Man with the crown, and now with the Macho King, and now you have the five years, pal. King. Don't even think about it. Unbelievable! He's got the blood. Get your that big is shots. a very big tongue, pal. Well, you know what I'm saying. Uh, ow! Uh, <laughs> I love this figure. Um, or not a figure, but buddy, bloody buddy. Get it now. Get bigshots.com. The first ever. It's historic. The first ever. Bloody buddy, you know what I'm just realizing now? What? In the gear that I wrestled Adam Copeland in. Wow. Oh. And you were bummed Look at out. That. Look at that. So you, so you got bloody three. against Adam Copeland? No, I, I didn't get bloody, but you know. Um, guys, check this out. Showed up today. Retro ring. Yo, what? WrestleMania. How, how are people get? I ordered Guys, this. Guys, I haven't got no shipping, nothing. I didn't get any notifications. I don't know what the fuck I did when I ordered this. Seven of them came to my house today. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Seven. What on? What state of mind would you think that's? I think I maybe ordered it like three times not knowing that I had ordered them. Oh, that makes total sense. Jeez. But I sold one at whatnot and tripled my money today, so... Oh, still. I'll take it. But yeah, this is an awesome ring. Is it not available anymore? I don't know. But I, it looks fantastic. I know I needed two because it has different stickers. So I'm going to display two different ones. You know, one has a WWE logo, <sighs> one has a WrestleMania. And um, I just love everything about this. And one, of course, to keep me on card. And then I think, you know, I just love it. It just, it looks so, the artwork is just so great. This is like yeah, a nice, a great box. Mid on card, cool, you know. I have no space for it. And I'm just, I mean, I'm gonna, when it comes, it comes and I'm going to keep it mid on card and just kind of put it yeah. in my storage unit. Cause. Yeah, I might just throw it in the box with the mid on card uh, retros. So. I absolutely got it. I absolutely needed it. Um, big, big purchase for me. Not a big boy because it was cheap, but I'm glad we got the, the another ring for the retros. Well deserved. The retros need some love. You know what I'm saying? Back to this Chelsea. Th this skirt is such high quality soft goods. The skirt is great. It's massive too. It's like yeah, it's really cool for a oh, uh, figure. 
it's just like when you're displaying it, it like just takes up so much room, you know, which is I know. good. I'm going to have to like put it. She's going on the friends and family shelf, so I got to figure yeah. that out. Actually. Which which one are you going to display? I only, I got the purple, which I'm glad I did because it has the correct finger and stuff. So um, It's yeah. more of a blue, but you know. To me, this is purple. It's it's blue, pal. Anyone? Chat? Mark? Colorblind Mark? It's blue. <laughs> it's blue. purple to me. It's blue. Uh-oh. What are you doing, Brian? <laughs> He's upset with you. <laughs> it's blue, like, right, D? Yeah, this, this is blue. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian also thinks that Macho Man from WrestleMania 7 is white and blue. I was just going to say, that's my other thing where I can't tell purple and blue because I know other people fight me on that one. And I'm like, no, that's blue, man. No, it's purple, pal. What do you think, D? WrestleMania 7. Yeah, it's purple. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why is this even a question? It's not well, a question, D. Maybe you guys he, got. Uh, maybe I have a hint color of, deficiency. Maybe D, I have a problem. D, like, why what? do you think Mattel only put the sh- tattoo on one one finger? It was on the. Thing? It was on. It was on the deco sheet, so it was just costed out. So, but, is, but no, isn't so that weird? That's on mistake. one, not the other. Yeah, it was just costed out. No one. It's no way was that. Costed. No consumer's going to care. Besides, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think it was costed. I, I think it was. An I error. don't think a little. No, that's clearly a mistake. An I guess it's a mistake. Oversight. You never know. You tampo never know. ops. They 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 count every single tampo op that's on that figure. So, all right. Well, guys, can we talk <laughs> about this? about to go under. Get rid of the Chelsea shush tat on the chase. Can we talk about these? We'll save here. our year. What do you got, Broski? I got the heels and faces. Smart. <laughs> Mark. Story. Hey, boss. Hey, hey boss. boss. And I got both of them. I got. The, I totally forgot you had a chase. Bro, yeah, I got really two. Got... I have more heels and faces than you, which uh, is Brian. annoying, by the way. I'm also. I kind of wish these were a little bit yeah, more drastically they're... different. That's they're my boss. biggest problem. Yeah. That's my, why did he pick two blues? I, yeah. like, I have a million colors. I'm also. Oh, here, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, we're my God. Uh oh. Uh oh. That is purple. The chase, the variant, that is purple. Oh, is it? Yes. I think that looks, it's a purple suit. It looks blue to me. What? This is like a it's navy purple. and a regular blue. Yeah, that's, Brian. This is I, the one that, this is the one from Mark's uh, little vignettes that he would do, the uh, the call ones. Mark talked about it on the silver lining. That was the one that got edited with the, with the one that's on the packaging. That is the actual outfit. I see, I see. But the, I guess what I'm confusing is that purple suit has like, has um patterns on it. Yeah, it doesn't have the, uh, I forget what the pattern name is, but yeah. I'm blown away that Zombie finally reused some parts here. Oh, what's, yeah? What's reused here? Well, Pettengill and Mark have the same exact legs. Oh, I haven't opened Pettengill yet. I haven't even gotten there. The same uh, arms, except the hands. And then it's not one piece. The jacket is like kind of... You know, Mattel style, like another piece right. put over. So they're just just the chest is different, but that that suit jacket part is reused. Aha, I got that's the Todd cool. Pettengill as well. Let me open these marks first. Hey, let me tell you though, that I'm what I'm blown away on is is how great the the hand articulation is. Like you you can you can put it forward for the point forward. You can you can say hold on a minute with the hand up. Oh, you could oh you could do so much with it. Hey there. But it's like it it also like waves, you know, like it moves a lot, which is like very anti Hasbro. Hasbro Roman's theme music. (laughs) Yeah, you can also also guys. You can pick your butt. Pick. I don't know why that got me so good. Yo, my my wife was making jokes. You picking Mark action? You my my wife was making jokes with this in the kitchen today, making my daughter die laughing Ugh. doing literally those things doing my voice and going oh i'm gonna pick my butt and my what daughter's about, just rolling on the what floor about nation of domination mark oh yeah there you go there you go Man, oh, the, mark, had, the, the posing possibilities are endless here how did I it love- feel mark to get your first you know zombie heels and face after all this time i mean it's awesome man you know like like i said uh, i think i mentioned it on the silver linings today <clears throat> the you know, heels and faces, obviously, the Hasbro style. That's my favorite figures. That's what got me back into collecting. That's what got me into wrestling. Um, It's w- w- my fondest memories of wrestling. So today, I just, for like a brief 15 minutes, I kind of just stood this figure next to like Hulk Hogan and, and Ultimate Warrior and even the 
retros and uh you know stand i stood them with the nwo and it's it's just like super cool uh i'm it's i it's well worth the wait bro thank incredible. you very much zombie yeah we gotta get that zombie dylan postal uh mega power shake they hate each other remember they they have like this todd pettigill is fucking awesome it's cool i can't believe we have a todd you know what i'm hot about microphone's way too fucking big though yeah and it comes out you know it's a real accessory really yeah um you know what i'm hot about where and how the fuck am i gonna track down todd pettigill to sign this thing for me oh shit does he still do radio in new york i don't think so brian am i going on the wall uh no, I don't have anything but Hasbro's up anymore. Oh, okay, but I do have to track you down to sign two of these for me this weekend. So, well, what about the cat? Is this gonna sw- switch out the custom at cap? Uh, I don't know. That, that, if you decide that's what you would like, I don't know. I kind of like the custom. Yeah, Mark, I love your in- figures, but I, yeah, I wish the suit was a drastically different color. Yeah, me too. I didn't pick it. I mean, it was limited to 500 and sold out immediately, so it doesn't even fucking matter. It doesn't right? matter. That's but true. But, Mark, I'm very happy for you, man. Like, Thank you, man. Obviously, we've made figures for you and Ringside. And, you know, even though this is technically a major West Fair podcast product, right. you know, it's still great. I'm yeah, I think, I think it's, it's it, you know, and again, I I was putting this over that I'm, if you look on the back, there's Macho Man and Ric Flair. And yeah, that's <laughs> cool, right? Yeah. Can't take that away uh, with, from you. With me. And um and you know what? To be honest, all of those figures are major bendies as well. So Yeah. Um it's just uh I don't know. It's it's really cool. And like I mean, I think it's just the connection to the Hasbros and the fact that I'm gonna put this in my Hasbro shelf. Designed by the same guy. Now look, I'm looking at the back of the box. Where is this macho and flair? Where are the road like where, where's Gargano? Where's <laughs> I Nick dude, Gage I was looking at that, and there's ones I forgot about, like the Road Warriors. I don't even remember that. Like, shit, didn't even remember that that was the thing. Zom- was if I was happen. zombie, I'd fucking be so petrified to show up to WrestleCon with all that talent who, who you've signed and don't have figures. <laughs> I'd be pet like Brooklyn Brawler came up to me. We were trying to, you know, like explain to him what big rubber guys were. He's like, "Is this like Zombie Sailor? He signed me and then ghosted me." <laughs> Uh, perfection Sorry. takes time, folks. These figures are great. Zombie, he takes his sweet ass time, but the just everything, just the I fucking love them. And if you don't like them, that's fine. But I think they're incredible. Just everything about it's top notch with the packaging. It's just, it's it's a very 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 quality product. I can't like wait across to add the board. This to my always, I'm pumped. And hey, exclusive slick to WrestleCon this oh. in hand, baby. Yeah. Very cool. All, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure it'll be close to a sellout on that. Oh, yeah. You guys get anything else? Uh, yeah, real quick. A fan gifted this to me at uh, uh, Squared Circle Expo. It's the pass to Heat Wave 98, Dayton, Ohio. Very famous ECW show. So I thought that was super cool. Going in my ECW collection. And speaking of collections, Uh-oh. The, the ever-growing TNA Marvel Mint on card autograph collection had a big weekend in Indianapolis. Got a couple TNA ledges. How about this? Let's see. The unadvertised Shark Boy. How'd you know to bring it? Listen to this. I'm I'm there hanging with Commander. He goes, Shark Boy's here. I go, he's not on the he wasn't on the website. He goes, I know. <laughs> he was pissed at Ed. He forgot to advertise him. I go, no fucking way. I cruise out into the uh the vendors. A mint on card shark boy right there. Figure fate. <laughs> oh, there it is. And it looks like in great it was, condition. I couldn't believe the condition. Everything. So it was pretty great. Which I had one back here in case you, you know, I, I ran into Sharky. So that was freaking amazing. Got that done. Which, which is like pure figure fate. Then another TNA legend. The guy that pretty much drew the house at the longest line at Squared Circle Expo. I got people in high places. Wow. The icon Sting. I'm jealous you got that picture with him. Badass. This is yeah. another p- part of that story, by the way. I- I'm getting pictures from Brian and and these guys all day of taking pictures with Sting and Bischoff and things like that. And Broski is nowhere to be seen. And I'm thinking to myself, why did they leave Broski out of this? Like, <laughs> he's just so he busy at like, his table. He doesn't need friends. He's I'm tapped that. out. <laughs> and guys, this one. Maybe my favorite one I've gotten so far in this collection. 
and I have been trying to do. I, it's not a must, but I, if I can think of one that's cool, I would like to get inscriptions, you know, on, yeah. on these things. So this one I thought of, eat a steak, stick man. Yeah, I thought of he's fat. But I went with Scott Steiner. Numbers don't lie, which I don't great. know is the uh, punchline to the Steiner, the famous Steiner math promo. But wow. I wasn't going to write Steiner math, like because that's not what was said or what right. it is. But I thought this was the perfect way to uh, you know get that done. It's also very well documented that I was. Very terrified of Scott Steiner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be in the vlog, but thank God Ed is the man. Hooked it he up with the man. that. By the way, Steiner like, came up and shook my hand after, not that he knew about this, but to say bye. It was like, super nice, but I'm just uh, like, I don't know him well enough to be like, is he going to think that's funny? Right, or think right, I'm a dick? Right, or, you yeah. know. Very but cool. Pretty awesome. Is that it? Uh, that is my whole that's week. For me. Big week, though. I mean, damn. All right, well, let's go to the Q&A brought to you by Blue Chew. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, if you're feeling your age more than you used to, especially in the bedroom, it's time to snap out of it. Blue Chew is what you need to perform where it's most important and perform in a major way. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problems here. Blue Chew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than the pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our major marks. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code MAJOR at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code MAJOR, to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. guys at Q&A every week. This week brought to you by Blue Shoe. Chelsea, you know, she's not home right now. She's, you know, as we record, it's Monday. She is WrestleMania week. I'm going to meet her. Oh WrestleMania my God, she's not coming night. home. She's not coming home. Uh, the old I'm bringing, days, I'm, bringing, about I'm, that. I'm bringing the Blue Chew to Philadelphia, pal. Oh, man, they all have to drive from Brooklyn to Philly tonight? Yeah. Well, they have like a, two days to get there, really. I know, but. That's not bad. But you want to get to that free room. Yeah, that's right. But use that Blue Chew if you want to, uh, you know, impress your lady, your your wife, your girlfriend, your significant other, whatever. Yeah. I'll be bringing them to WrestleMania, baby. I'll be bringing them to WrestleCon. I'll be signing blue. No, I don't know about that. But. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. What kind of questions you guys got? Uh, all right. I got one right here. Um, Johnny Broski is his name. Nice. At Johnny Logic. Uh, so I was talking about that retro pack um, for this year's WrestleMania match. So with yeah. Mark Sterling wanting a retro pack for this year's WrestleMania, do you think a potential pivot for the retros could be going towards classic matches slash moments like the ultimate uh, Razor slash HBK set? Uh, hashtag Ask Major Pod. Uh, I don't know if it has to be the pivot. But I do think that it, it is interesting to think about like an a Ultimate Warrior retro like Mania Six. I don't hate that necessarily. I don't like the example of the Sean and Razor unless it were to include a ladder. And then it's like, well, how, what's what's a hat, retro ladder look like? You know, well, that would be cool. Actually. Yeah, I don't mind that innovation. Yeah, 
because the, then whatever the Hasbro ladder would be, I imagine kind of looks like you know the Bendem ladder or something. But like, but they, like for they, instance, like I guess they could do it with the ringside, that. right? I guess they could do it with either the ringside two packs or the four packs. Like for instance, if they did WrestleMania twelve, they could do uh, you know Brett and Sean. And then like Taker and Diesel, oh, those are bad examples because we already have those guys. But if they did stuff like that, yeah, yeah, I like, wouldn't be upset at that. Well, we just ha- we just got that. We just got a Taker. We yeah, have two I Takers think it's just so hard to do. I don't know because we get the retro so infrequently to get yeah. like the same guys. It's yeah. not that fun. I guess when I saw this, I immediately thought of how much I would want a Mania Six Warrior retro. Right. I mean, listen, they haven't made, they could read, they don't have a Hogan, you know? The, the Hogan no, they have is like- No eight, shirt Hogan. Right. Yeah, they, they have an 85 Hogan, 84 yeah. Hogan. Mania yeah, 6. Damn. That hey, would be cool. What, what about, you know, if they did, if it was a four pack and then you got Macho King and Dusty? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No yeah, shirt, well, no well, shirt well. on that Dusty? Yeah. I, I, I dig something like that. I- I kind of like what they've been doing where they can do a little from this, a little from that, you know? But I'm not against if it was like match specific or event specific. Yeah. If it's a cool thing and it comes out in a random set, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Tag teams, you know, ma- grudge matches. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I, I'll I go to my question because it's kind of WrestleMania related as well. It says from Draconic Lord 72 What's the biggest missed opportunity for a Mania match that never happened? Could be a dream match or maybe one that was. Being led to that didn't happen. Hashtag Ask Major Pod. I Broski mean, Ziggler I, I, WrestleMania uh, twenty nine. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that was the one. Shut the so, fuck. That's yeah, your no, answer. No, I mean, I was gonna say that, but um, uh, I, I, I thought you literally were using this to say that. But okay, no, I mean, you can't say that. I think you know we never got uh, Taker Sting. Yeah, like that year that Hunter got that match, they could have. But that was also. Because I just saw in the Bray doc that was Bray Taker that year, so he yeah. was like pretty. And, th- and Bray, you gotta think that's like the Y family was so hot. Yeah. You know? uh, one that always and to this day I don't really know why we didn't get it was WrestleMania Seven. I'm sorry, WrestleMania Eight. Uh, Hogan Flair. Well. Yeah, I guess we never really got a real good excuse. As like to why it's that, like yeah. set up that way, built that way, and then all of a sudden, nope. Yeah. Yeah, that that's insane, insane. You know that Flair Macho is like one of my favorite. Of course, right? Ever. And I'm glad. And I was super yeah. pumped that Macho won, but still, like, oh man, Hogan Flair would have been a big one. Chris Grocock says Rock Triple H Mania 16. <sighs> that would have been a lot better than that clusterfuck they had. Yeah. That okay. That's sucked. a that's a good one as well. Yeah. Uh, there's got to be some other ones like. Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels rematch at WrestleMania that was Thir- supposed to 13, happen. 13. But, they, but you can't say that because that would take away Bret Austin, which is like one yeah. of the most iconic matches of all time. So, And it, I didn't realize until recently, or, or I forgot, like Bret gets involved in the Sid uh, Taker match and know, costed right? the belt. That's, like, that's WWE like revisionist history shit, like the way they edit shit, things in packages. And yeah. You never, you know, documentaries or whatever. Like, Right. Like uh, Eddie getting help from Goldberg to win the title, they just right. ignore you know, right. in the history right. of time. I I was always pissed that Hogan didn't do anything at WrestleMania 20, and then we get like the the Hogan Vince match at like 21, right? Yeah, but he I think he would just like come and go and get falling outs. He'd film that reality show. Well, right? no, that's not. But he had like a falling out because I remember right. you know, he's back NWO yeah. style. He does like the Hulk still rule stuff, and he's gone. By SummerSlam. Yeah. Like, I remember at SummerSlam, they sold, at SummerSlam 2002, they sold the red and yellow Boas, but he was already out. Right. Like, Brock had already got rid of him. Yeah. And that was right when they debuted the, Bo- the Boas, at least in the New York market. Uh, I'm sure there's other matches that could have happened, but I'm saying, like, major, major matches. Major. I do think Hogan Flair is probably. Is there is there a reason, maybe you notice, why Nash didn't wrestle at WrestleMania 18? I think they thought that that hall and austin was the better match that's all but like why didn't nash wrestle at all that's what i'm saying oh i mean i don't know because then they would have to set up a whole nother program you know? but like in all those nwo two packs he's like with kane or not all those two packs but it's like oh like you think that could have been what, what maybe i don't know be? maybe i don't know 
And, and here's another here's another thing that I never quite understand. You talk about revisionist history. You know, they always say that like you know Hogan went into that match like with The Rock as like a heel, but Toronto's cheering him so loud that's why they turned him babyface, right? They say that all the time, but yet NWO come out at the end of the match and attack him. <laughs> Yeah. So was that, was that the fly? Like, come on. That's one of those ones where we'll probably never know the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause, it's like. Yeah. Because there's so much bullshitting involved. There's so much bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Someone All says right. Edge and Lita versus the Major Brothers. Oh, hey. Edge versus Hawkins versus Ryder at WrestleMania 25. <laughs> <laughs> Robbed. Robbed. Uh, my question is from Bobby Mitchling. going to lighten the mood here a little bit with this. What are songs that make you sing along? Whenever you hear them, hashtag Ash Major. What do you build me up? That's Mark's only. This song. is how we do it. This is it. where I like just get really aggravated with you guys because you're the weirdest music people ever. And Why? I do a podcast Come on. with you too. You, I, those, I guess this just turned into what's your go-to karaoke song? When the lights go down and I am free. <laughs> no, I like music. I just can't remember. I I, I, I don't know shocked. names. We didn't say this earlier in the show. I mean, obviously, because I've heard it so much. Like, the crowd doesn't react to your song. Oh, thank you, bro. First of all, in retrospect, thank God, because it was a bigger pop. But in the in the moment, I'm like, oh, my. Because I don't know that my name's not on the screen. Right. Yeah, you know? That'd be intense. So I'm yeah. like, no fucking way. Yeah. You know? like, But they, they did it. so Because unless you go to indie shows, you don't know my you don't fucking music. That. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, even like TNA, it's cut out, right? It's not cut out, but, like. I don't I think it's at TNA they don't add that. Ding, 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 ding. I, I don't. But, but thank God, it's how it was with no fucking name. Because, but for me, for that five six seconds, I'm thinking, holy shit, that's rough. It's a long it's, six seconds when you're like, shit. Yeah, but then, yeah. then it was like, then it was like monster. But God, fuck. But I guess my other thing was I know that song by heart, so like yeah. I was like, oh whoa, fuck. But I get it. Yeah. Um, go to karaoke song, Buttercup for Sterling for sure. Um, we will rock you. Um, <laughs> we are the champions. Sing, sing Larger shit, than uh, life, Backstreet Boys. Ba- back yep. in the day, mine was uh, "Your Love" by the Outfield. Never heard that song. You guys, <laughs> fucking know that song. Don't don't play don't it. Play it don't, play it. it. don't play sing it. it. Don't play Josie's it. Don't play it. Josie's on a vacation. Fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, uh, which I just looked it up. That song's from 1983. I don't know why. Living on a prayer. Oh yeah, living on prayers, timeless. I don't know, me and my friends we were like, for some reason, when me and my friends were single, that was like my go-to stupid karaoke song. And Journey, <sighs> yeah, don't any, stop believing. Any, any separate Journey ways. Song, like, tear the house down. Don't stop believing. Remember, Broski heard it for the first time when Steve Believe came out at a live show. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, great questions. Let's go to some good housekeeping. All right, guys, youtube.com slash at Major WF Pod. We got a lot of vlogs coming. The Squared Circle Expo vlog is coming. We got a WrestleCon vlog coming. We got a toy hunt we're filming. We got the Matt and Brian, I'm sorry, the Zach and Kurt incarnation domination. So stick around to our YouTube channel and also our Clips channel. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Major WF Pod. Get all your t-shirts and merch and swag on Pro Wrestling Tees. Major pod merch. Guys, if you listen to Friday, there's probably live 19 extra merch up there. Major Bendies. Get your Major Bendies. There's a Deanna Perrazzo up there. There's a Chavo Guerrero. There's a Ricky Morton exclusive. exclusive. And the live 19 exclusive will be there as well as pre-ordering, a.k.a. ordering your Powers of Pain and your Dusty Roads. If you want to advertise your product or service, hit us up. Major Podcast at gmail.com. What not? Every Monday, Brian and I, we go on whatnot. We sell a lot of cool stuff. Did you see the stuff I was selling this week, Brian? Someone told me you sold a can of beans from your cabinet. No, they were green beans, and I wrote Chelsea. So they were Chelsea green beans. Also, I sold oh, my God. first time ever. No comments. First time ever, almost ring worn t shirt. Because I saw that as well. <laughs> Mark, what do you think about that? I was wearing a shirt, a death matching shirt. And I was like, eh, I'd rather just wear the flannel with no t-shirt under. Couldn't think, I, I was going, you know, thinking of the match. I'm like, oh, it's not a really good spot to rip off my shirt and choke him with it. So not 
wear it out there, but I sold it as almost ring worn because I almost wore it out there. But I did wear it. <laughs> I did wear it backstage at AEW, so it's almost ring worn. Somebody Marky was saying, Kayfabe says almost worn. It's mine. Somebody said like uh, I don't know who I was standing next to, but but you walk out and they go, oh no, doesn't have a shirt. That's like one move gone. <laughs> He's down a few, down a few spots. <laughs> oh man! Uh, also, guys, plugs. Uh, oh fuck! Major rewind. Jay George kills it every two weeks. Trip down memory lane. We've been doing this podcast for fucking so long. Never missed a week. We don't give you best of episodes. We give you best of episodes every two weeks as bonuses. So get them in the main feed. And uh, this week, guys, of course, live nineteen Philadelphia sold out. Could be a hell of a show. Stick around to our social media. We might be working on a way to kind of interact with you guys during the show on social media. And, of course, WrestleCon, uh, I will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And yeah, let's let's run down our individual schedules here for yeah, everybody. Yeah, I, I will be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and then Friday night, Joey Janela Spring Bake, myself with Broski, Jimmy Lloyd, and SDL, taking on Blue Pain. I'm very excited Blue for that Pain. match. Well, WWE hit Blue Cane with a cease and desist, so it's Blue Pain. <laughs> Blue Pain. Major Pod card alumni. Uh, right. All right, let's see. Thursday night, Major Pod live Philadelphia. David, oh, you're going to be there? Sold out. I'm going to make it and have a voice this time. Actually, I had a fucking nightmare last night that I lost my voice again this week, and I was like devastated when I woke up. Anyway, that's going to be what it is. We know that it's going to be rocking. Awesome. Wake up. WrestleCon for a few hours, straight to the 2300 Arena for a 1 o'clock show, Battleground Championship Wrestling. I believe there's limited tickets available still for that, the ECW Arena. 1 o'clock show, tagging with my long-time tag team partner, Dylan Hornswoggle Postle, the star of Six WrestleMania. So I'll be leaning on him uh, nice. to get through that one. Then that turns into a little convention right there, the 2300 Arena. Uh, free Friday night into Saturday and Sunday, which are WrestleCon signings all day. So that is pretty damn cool, schedule. man. I will have Bendy Super Sevens hats. I'll be selling those at the live show and WrestleCon and the Twenty Three Hundred Arena until supplies last. And I have a massive agenda of personal autographs and things I got to get oh, done. Oh boy! And some wheels. It's, wheel, it's some, convenient, some, Brian, some, that you can drive. Big. Oh, it's a. It's a. A burden and convenient because the amount of stuff I have, I'm very intimidated with the major pod merch and the setup stuff, and you know it's it's a big big weekend. Like I said, big rubber guys represented all weekend long. Exclusive Macho Man, looking for a sellout, which I feel like we're uh, on the verge of. Let's go. It's gonna be gonna be a lot of fun, like it always is. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about the whole thing, but I'm also very excited to Sunday when I'm driving home. Just. <laughs> Oh, we were just talking about that. Uh, Yeah, so I'm going to be at the Major Pod Show. Uh, Friday afternoon, I'll be at WrestleCon, and then I'll be headed over to the Supercard of Honor show for Ring of Honor, and then all day Saturday, I will be um, at WrestleCon at the table, and then I think then I'll be going home on Saturday night, so maybe Mark hates money. (laughs) Mark hates money. We'll see see how it's going. And brought to you by Always, and that's that's a fuck up, it's Always Ready, Inc., um, yeah, there was another one. Also, I told Mark before we went on the air, like you have a brand new heels and faces figure that people are going to want to get and get signed, and you're the only one who has them to sell them. I think you're going to be doing all right at WrestleCon. So, yeah, pump the brakes. Pal. I will have I will have a, a number of them. Uh, zombie, I also, z- zombie. I also have today. my Twitch exclusive Vendies. Oh, very cool. Zombie asked me today if he wants me to bring some Series One heels and faces for me. Then offer to sell to me. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You sell them, pal. I got enough shit. To I sell. literally had the same talk with him. I said, you sell them, and then if you yeah. get them signed, I'm right yeah. there. I don't want to have any more inventory. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, pal. All right. Well, we'll see you in Philly. Wait, wait. Did we talk about YouTube? Yes. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> I zoned out. Sorry. All right. We're out of time. Oh, see dub all week long. Let's go. See ya. Join the community at MajorMarks.com and get access to exclusive content, behind-the-scenes footage, and become a member of the Major family. 
You get bonus episodes on our careers, wrestling figure history, and exclusive interviews with our friends and legends in the business each month. You also get early access to YouTube videos and, of course, the weekly podcast ad-free and breaking news updates. Brand new shows featuring... <laughs> oh, baby. And you... Each month, you can interview someone in the wrestling business with a captain's log. Also, buy, sell, and trade in our exclusive Facebook community where people have become friends in real life. Certain memberships include merch like monthly trading cards and quarterly mystery gifts. Become a major mark and join MajorMarks.com today. <laughs>